All right, finally set up. Hey, Roblox guy, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I wasn't supposed to be up, and uh, I, I was not supposed to be up. I'm, I'm not ready to be up, but my cats woke me up. Started this this early morning when um, I heard a loud bang that woke me up, and so I, I come out to check what it is. My two cats are just sitting at the floor looking at me, looking a little sus. And then, of course, they expect food, because every time I come out in the morning, I'm the one that feeds them. So they see me, and they expect food. But I came out, and these guys were on the floor over here. My Kratos and my All Might were on the floor. So I, I'm assuming one of them tried to jump up here on top of the computer. Um, yeah, so. Good? No, I'm, I just woke up. I'm good, though. It's the weekend. I'm ready. I saw some thumbnails that Ash joined, well, let's watch this video actually. Ash joined Fateless and I just went to Fateless's channel and I, I checked that out a little bit. I didn't watch their videos because I wanted to go, go over with you guys, but I do know this. I know that Hell Hades collaborating with um, Hisham, as well as some of the people who are in the raid community have come together and they are planning on making a video game together. One that's going to supposedly, in their eyes, try to be the best gacha game out there. Hopefully rivaling Raid. And we'll talk more about that later on. But I, I want to start off by looking at Ash's video, because I didn't watch it. I saw the thumbnail, but I did not watch it, because I, you know, I spend, I, I wait until I do these streams so that I can watch it and react with it with you guys. I think it's a great way to, um, to you know, hang out with you. Uh, okay, so I think it was this one. Hey guys, Asher coming at you today in Fateless. Uh, today I'm thrilled to be joined by the well-known. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a fun game. And I'm excited to see. I, I was not interested too much into Fateless. I wasn't really into it until until I saw Ash join. And then I was like, okay, if Ash is gonna if Ash is gonna be in the game, then you know. Oh the famous, the infamous Hell Hades. Hades, what's what's he got in his teeth? What's up, man? How you doing, dude? I'm doing really well. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I 
I'm looking nah. forward to this chat. Me too. Um, me too. It's been yeah. a while. It's been a while coming here. We've been working a little bit behind the scenes on Fateless, and I am thrilled to be a part of the team. Uh, I've been watching from afar for a while yeah. now at what you guys have been doing. And I guess why don't you, for folks out there who have no idea what the heck Fateless even is, why don't you kind of catch us up? Like, what is what is Fateless, and uh, why did you start, decide to start this uh, company? Yeah, sure. So I guess I guess about nine months ago. Um, you know, I was in one of so I, I, you know, I don't, I remember when Hell Hades, because I've been playing since 2019, and back in 2019 there weren't too many raid content creators like you had chosen. Hell Hades was putting out content, but it was faceless. He he wasn't showing his face. Finally, had a big reveal once enough people asked him, and that's how we gained his following. But uh, there weren't too many people. But yeah, I remember Hell Hades before he started showing his face before he got big. I don't know if he was able to start this company because it sounds like it's expensive to start a company. Of course, I, I'm not an entrepreneur or anything. I don't know. But I don't know if he got all his money to start Fateless through YouTube or if like he has a really nice paying job in the UK. It's interesting, but you know, I got to respect the grind. He's, he's putting it out there. I think he's got like one of the, the most subs for the, our, our little niche in, in Raid. So... And everybody watches him, so you know, props to him. I know he's co-founding with Hisham as well, so maybe that's like the half and half thing. And my HH gaming meetings, and um, you know, the team are kind of like laughing again, saying, "Oh yeah, the community have asked us to, to create our own game again." And I was laughing. I was like, "Why don't we just do it?" Yeah. And it was quite quiet in the room, you know, in my meeting, and and I was like, "Guys, oh, on on the fusion champion, uh, yeah, let's go over there real quick." Oh, there's this stuff. This is new. I didn't even pull up my, my thing. I went straight to hanging out with you guys. So I think the mythical champion is great. I don't think she is cracked. Like I don't I don't see her being meta in arena. But then again, yeah, I don't I don't really know until I, I fight her or I get her. Let me hit all these red dots. I don't like red dots, so I like to get them out of the way. I've been saving up my uh, soul thingies for a three soul Rotos or uh, sorry, a three soul Rotos or a three soul uh, Taurus King. What's up, dude? How you doing this fine morning? Thank you, thank you for coming through. All right, so Lady Mikage, awesome champion. I'm not going to go over her kit unless you ask me to because I feel like all the other big CCs have already done so. But she looks amazing and that, whoa, wait a minute. Look at that. What's this back here? What does she have going on back there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm good. Uh, my cats woke me up this morning, but I'm good. They, they always try to... I don't know. You know, cat, cats are cat, cats are basically children, basically. Yo, Lady Mikage's got this. I love my wife, but you see this thing back here. Actually, why do spiders have this? Anyway, I'm 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 like I'm perseverating too much on on what's going on behind there. But as far as to answer your question, to to fuse her, I don't think it's hard. This was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. For some reason, I thought it was going to be a bunch of new champions because they've so far been doing new champions, right? For a lot of these few, it, it used to be that I would save up all my epics, and then when the fusion came around, I would just use them and fuse whatever new champ, new fusion champion came out. But then raid started realizing that hey, we just released this fusion, and people are already fusing this champion. Oh, they're keeping these guys in stock. That's why they started introducing new characters so that people couldn't just save their Pokemon. Now, obviously, I consider it to be a little more easy because I have this champion that I don't use. I don't even know who it is. I think it's a dwarf. Tatsu looks pretty cool, but I wouldn't mind giving her up to get Lady Mikage because Tatsu's an arena specialist, but I don't see her being meta. She's been out for a while. I think I've only fought like one of her. Not too many people are using her. In fact, let's go look at 
her um, rate. Does she have ratings? Shadowkin. So not so many people have her. Like I said, she's an arena specialist. But even in arena, look, she's only rated at 4.2. Faction Wars for sure. Arena defense is pretty shite. And then that's about it. So she's a cool... Con uh, cool. Visually, she's tantalizing. I think she's awesome. Uh, interesting. I love my wife. But her kit isn't amazing enough for me to be like, you know what, I need a, I need her. And you, you, I'm, I'm going to keep her because I, I use her for my arena team. Like, no. So I don't mind giving her up. And then obviously these last two guys... I have summoned copy, copies and copies and copies of both of these epics, and I'm mad that I didn't save them. And I remember even looking at this guy, Weregren Suncurse. I've summoned quite a few of, of this guy. He looks like the wolf boy or the the werewolf. It's an old old 1980s movie, I think. Uh, about him playing basketball, I think. I, I don't re really remember. I've summoned this guy so many times. And I kept thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I should keep him. But because Ray does not give us so much space here or in the vaults, I was like, nah, I'm going to get rid of him. So I did. And that's my fault. Now, I think what I'm going to do is start saving up all my 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 copies. I... You should save at least one of every Pokemon that you get. So be smart. Do what I didn't. And then once Mikage, once I get Mikage, I'll probably build up Karato again. Where's Karato? Actually, I'm making this hard for myself. So I was using Karato Fox Hunter for some time because I have Yumiko. And I think he's awesome because he can actually counter a Taurus. He does pretty well countering Taurus. Damage inflicted by the champion cannot be decreased by any passive skill or masteries. And the reason this is so effective is because Taurus' passive is all incoming damage reduced by 50%. But when you have Karoto, whose passive doesn't allow his damage to get reduced, it's an automatic counter for Taurus. And then his moves just hit hard. He's got the block skill, block active skills, hits hits pretty hard AoE. You can nuke down um, somebody, or you can nuke down the opposite team with the right setup. This stun is pretty handy, and then this double hitter is pretty nice as well. Solid champion. So I'm going to build him and pair him with Lady Mikage. I might try out a fun arena team. The reason I want Karato is because, uh, wait, what's it called? Where's this move? She's got one move that, yeah, her A1 attacks one enemy with one random ally from the Shadowkin faction using their default skill. So, yeah. Easy fusion. Definitely go for it. No reason pretty much not to. I don't imagine you would keep these legendaries for anything. So, yeah, that's my, that's my hot take on it. Good question. All that's done. Let me just run. Let me run something. Wait, did I do all my tag team? I did not do all my tag team running. Okay. Um, tag team is not my favorite thing to do, but we'll just throw these in and hope for the best. All right, let's continue. Should we just do it? And <laughs> and basically that then. I'm sorry, King. Did I ask you how you're doing? How, how's your day, man? spiraled into like us us properly exploring you know what would it take how much cash would we need etc mm -hmm. etc and we decided at that point nine months ago you know what we've got the expertise in this market yeah uh, we think we know how to create a really great game and fateless was born in effect where you know we, we kind of started to bring on some some credible people in the industry to follow our dream which is ultimately so it, it's kind of half and half i think
yes, they have the insight and the expertise and the vision of people who have come from the community base, meaning they, they can see for the, for the most part, the way that the raid community is able to think they can hear our plights, our wants, our needs, our, our distresses, the way we feel about certain things, and they can relate to that. As far as making a video game, you're kind of up against people who've already been doing it for a while, people with bigger pockets. So my hope is that, yes, they eventually make a game better than, than Raid, because that would be nice. Um, but I, I would just ca I would let I would I would say caution, throw caution to the wind, whatever it is. Don't think just because you've you've been, you know, doing this for a while or you're you are, I mean, you are experts in the field. I'm not going to deny that, but just, you know, remain level-headed when it comes to this because you don't want to mistake or make the wrong step and then overstep your, you know what I'm trying to say? Try to do too much, maybe. I haven't really thought about it. I'm just ranting here. Not too bad. Thinking about going to the casino later on. Okay. Well, best of luck to you, dude, if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, you know, go and hit the hit the jackpot that's void shards right there we need to create the best so at least at least when you gamble at the casino there's somewhat of a return somewhat of a potential of return. I, I don't condone you know gambling but at least there's a chance to get some money back best game in this genre um that's ever been seen so yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a lofty, super exciting time. That is a lofty, lofty goal, my friend. Goal, but but yeah. you know what? Part of what high, you know? right? But why might as well, right? Part of what turned me on to you and the in the team, obviously, is frankly seeing your success in hellhades.com. You know, yeah. not just your YouTube channel, which has been amazing in its own right. I mean, you're the number one guy for news. You're one of the OGs in the scene. That's right. And you he, know, you have he a, is one of the oldest of G's, like we said. Um had a, had a thought. Massive following and great affinity with your with your viewers. Uh, a great pulse for the community. To your to your uh, to your previous point, but also HH Gaming Network and mm -hmm. Saf and Fixion and the entire yeah. team that's grown over the years. How many people are on the HH team before we move into Fateless right now? Yeah, so we've got seventeen people that, that earn some form of income through um, HellHades.com or the HH Gaming kind of group. Yeah. And okay. So. Damn. You know, scratch that. He does have experience running a company. Um, yeah, I don't know why it slipped my head. I use Hell Hades, his his his, his shit all the time. Uh, big shout out, by the way. Not that he knows who I am, but I mean, he's helped out the raid community just as well as like Farb stuff. The tools that they put out make doing raid a lot easier, less tedious. And that's insane, honestly. I, that I know that obviously, insane. you know, from your point of view. <laughs> with with amg you you're in a similar boat or much bigger boat actually i guess in terms of like numbers of, of... his name is simon lockerby i didn't know his name was simon i've always been calling him hell hades lockerby or lockerby sorry i'm an american lockerby his name is simon lockerby he does look like a simon doesn't he crew and what have you but um yeah i mean it's it, i'm really proud of that it's something which i've been really proud of oh, yeah, the way the kind of brand that, yeah. has grown from just being kind of me as a creator to this kind of like team and then really you know this brand uh it's been really cool and and in essence it's enabled us to do what we're doing at fateless yeah because yeah. it's given us a real stability in the background to be able to do this it's built a community which kind of care about the direction we go um yeah, so I guess it does give us a bit of credibility moving into game design. Well, I imagine the way that you uh, develop the HH crew and then the Fateless crew, I imagine in some ways from afar, it mirrors the way that that I uh, and my co-founder, uh, mm -hmm. Lance, aka Powerbank, started AMG, right? We, we basically looked for passionate people who knew the space that we were working in and who were smart, you know, <laughs> and yeah. frankly, yeah. and we put them all together and saw, you know, the magic kind of materialize over the last five years uh, regarding AMG. And it seems like you guys did the same thing with the HH Gaming Crew. You've made one of the most successful websites 
out there in gaming in the world. I don't yeah. think people recognize how <laughs> massive that community, that website, that offering is. Uh, it's 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 incredible. So when I saw that with that same mentality that I have, Hades, about this is like, listen, I might not be the smartest person in the world, but I have a good eye for talent, I feel like, right? <laughs> As one of my only skills. So whenever I see people doing amazing stuff out there, whether it be in gaming or in life, I always try to like make a note of I want to work with them in the future, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's well, what, I, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, I was going to say what, well, you know, likewise with yourself. And, and I think when we started to talk about Fateless and, you know, was there an opportunity to, to work together on it? I was just kind of like, this is amazing. Um, you know, yourself, we had M Tash as, as approached yes. us and, and wanted to be involved. We've had you know, others oh. as well. Like it, oh. it, it's really been oh, yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah. No, no, no. that we're kind of drawing. I, I have the memory of a goldfish. Yeah, M Tashed. That, that's that's what oh, I want to talk about. That I saw that last night. That M Tashed. I didn't watch the whole video, but M Tashed. I don't know if you guys know who M Tashed is. For people who were in the Genshin Impact type community, you probably know who M Tashed is. He he did Genshin Impact for a long time. I think he's a great speaker when it comes to his videos. Very clear, very concise high energy stands out puts out good information great energy i gotta say i'm not sub to him anymore because i just don't play genshin impact or honkai or, or that type of uh gotcha i've mainly been focused on raid but i think m tash is an excellent kind of outside of the space of raid but also able to bring that that gotcha system um what do you call it um Able, able to provide perspective within the same niche that is Gacha Gaming to Fateless. He also does play Raid. He's been playing Raid for a while. He hasn't made Raid content. I, uh, I don't think he's made Raid content. But yeah, I think Mtash is a good addition. Us, who I've got a lot of respect for already. Um, and yeah, it was similar to HH Gamers. Like people approached us and, and honestly... Now, I don't know how to build a website. I don't know how to build the tools that we've got and all that sort of stuff, but I've got a good creative vision of what I think would be cool. So I guess my approach is surround myself with people that are insanely good at what they do yeah. and build some holes in terms of my abilities and my knowledge. And, and, you know, we kind of, and, and like you say, bring the right sort yeah. of passion and energy and how you build the uh, I guess, you know, work ethic. And so before you know it, you've got yourself a great team, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been super cool. Both, both the HH gaming stuff and then moving into Fateless, you know, it's, I guess, because we've already had that approach in the past, people are quite enthusiastic to then look to see what we're doing in kind of next ventures. Absolutely. And it's, it's you know, not to get too lofty or, or on our soapboxes too much here. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's great advice. Honestly, it's probably my number one piece of like business and maybe even beyond business advice is that find people who are to your point, hardworking, passionate, intelligent, and just associate affiliate yourself and try to work with them, you know, even yeah. if the the immediate yield isn't, uh, or even if the yield isn't immediate, I will say right. And, you know, that sure. takes me into to fateless. So it's not just yeah. a game. The game is kind of maybe a misnomer from people out there uh, that the game is fateless, right? The company oh, yeah. Yeah, that's is not fateless. Yeah. It's a game studio. So this first project that you guys are, you know, mainly working on, or I should say we, I guess, are, are mainly yeah. working on now, right? Uh, I guess this is just one of many, you know, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, tell us about, I, I guess I want to ask you the toughest question first. I don't want this to be too much of a softball interview here, uh, Hades. <laughs> and that is... Dude, so many creators have tried to make games. I've seen it so many throughout the years. And I hate to say it, but they've all been failures, you know, like <laughs> to a to a certain extent, to a certain degree, you know. Yeah. Uh, either like massive cash gabs, grabs and then they're gone. Yeah. Uh, or just never materialize. Like they get fan investments or a crowdfund and then nothing ever happens. What gives you faith that, you know, that Fateless is not going to be just one on that long line of, of failed projects? Hard hitting. Yeah, I, I think there's a few things. So I think we've gone about it the right way. So we thought about crowd funds. We thought about, you know, other avenues and stuff. Actually, I think we've gone in a direction which totally de-risks the project. Mm. Um, and we will definitely deliver a game. Like that 100%, oh, yeah. we will deliver a game. And that that's, for me, the best foundation so we we went for proper investment 
uh, which we secured. We actually secured full investment in 10 weeks. It was insane. Yeah, are you, um, I'm not sure if it's public, but can we say how much that was or no? I, I mean, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we say it, yeah. Six, six million dollars Six million, investment. so like, that is um, enough yeah. to build an awesome game you know that's enough to yeah. build an awesome game which is great you know like because well, listen man i mean crowdfunding for a few hundred thousand dollars is cool uh but it's not in my experience it's not it's not nearly enough and even the no. six million to your knowledge too it's not enough to market that you know long term yeah but it's yeah, enough to it. make an it's awesome it. product and foundation you know yeah well before we we went out for investors yeah, so six million will probably get the game out i don't think they're advertising is going to be on the on the same par as raid but they're going to rely heavily on whales and krakens yeah six million it's a lot of money and for them to get that in 10 weeks you know uh that's that's hard i mean hopefully it takes takes off because if, if you can't pay back that six million dollars i mean ish, you know what i mean yeah but we actually honestly you know, now that that I see that Ash is in on it, I when the game comes out, I'm probably gonna make a separate YouTube channel and and cover that game as well. I think that would be interesting. Actually, did our homework. So originally, if we go back those nine months and we start to look into game development, we thought we'd need something like one and a half million, and we were like, well, you know what? Over time, we might be able to fund it through ventures and get yeah. some investment or whatever. But actually, when yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do so well. They the raid. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh no, that that's true. Yeah. Well, I I meant like. Yeah, no. Well, I just meant like the the way that they had, because yeah, no, they they have the following already. So, and word of mouth and whatnot is is very powerful. I just meant that like they can't, they probably won't be able to do trailers and designs for their game the same way that raid does like every time raid puts out something they, they put out like a, a mini episodic um trailer so that's just that's just what i meant but yeah they can they can just advertise on their channels they're all going to do it i'm going to be probably one of the people who start making content for the game once it comes out so i mean that's advertisement in itself that's why raid allows us to do you know, use Raid Shadow Legends and make Raid content. It's free. It's free advertising for them. We started to look into building the game, the number of characters we want in our game, all, this, all these type of things. They've all got a price tag. Mm. And yeah, you know, we don't want to build a game that, that limps into the market. Okay, so we want it to be yeah, they will. Um, of the visual quality. Yeah, they, they got to do it the hard way. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like, mad respect mad respect for for fateless the, the whole community you know getting behind this I, i'm excited for for this game I'll, I'll be honest with you i'm excited for it because at the end of the day oh what's up synth how you doing bro thanks for stopping by because at the end of the day we win and what do i mean by that i mean that even if fateless doesn't do as well as we all hope at least raid will have that rival there and when you have competition and when you have a rival and you're up there you don't just sit there and wait for somebody to to become better than you when someone starts to catch up to you what do you do think about like a like a tournament if you're if you're shooting for first in like a spider tournament tournament and you see someone coming up what do you start doing you start slamming spider right so raid gets their game up so Fayless keeps trying to push up and the community within Raid is going to benefit because they're going to try or the Raid is going to try and make changes to benefit the community so that they get more traction. And in the other sense, what if Fayless surpasses Raid? Well, we still win because Raid's not going to let it just, you know, go to go to waste. Raid's going to try to improve or to we all get a better game. There, There is no scenario where I think, where we lose. So I'm, I'm very excited for this. Yeah, advertising will be easy. Yeah, good morning, Synth. How are you doing, man? We're just here. Uh, I'll catch you up. We're just, we're talking about uh, Fateless and drinking coffee. And yeah, so we're, we're discussing, we're having a little discussion about it. Feel free to put your input. 
that my community else. currently our community is currently love right that that's the minimum yeah. requirement is to yeah. get to that visual quality which again is expensive mm -hmm. to do so it's yeah like number okay, of characters so he just he just thought, yeah it's a win-win situation he just talked about that visual quality that raid has i don't know of any other game out there that that's like a mobile game that's doing better visually than um in term in terms of um graphics than than oh we won other than raid they do an excellent job they do a terrific job you're definitely looking forward to it yeah i think we all Visual quality are. complexity of bosses all these type of things were part of our brief out to uh, I guess studios that build games for hire in effect. Um, mm -hmm. And we put an RFP out to a number of studios and we're like, look, come back to us. How much will it cost to build this game? Um, rather than this is our budget. It's like, no, you tell us what we need to get in terms of investment because we want to build a top quality game, not a middle yeah. middling game, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so we found that out and it was like around three and a half million dollars. Um, so about double what we originally thought. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we had that. We knew we needed a marketing budget. It was one mobile game I love, but the discontinued it for some reason. I thought you were just taking a break. Or did you just like decide to cut it out altogether? Well, stick around, King, because um, when they come out with this game, you, you might be uh, interested in, in playing the new game when it comes out. We know we need team, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we, we got to a, a figure of six million as investment. And then obviously we can build on top of that as well in yeah. terms of you know, additional marketing and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So so in terms of going back to my original point, we will launch a game. Well, we absolutely will launch a game. We, we know exactly what the cost is going to be to make the game. And we know what features we've already asked for for that budget. So that's a, a tick. We know that. We, we've done that. Um, now all we need to do is have the right creative direction to make sure that it's built in the way we want it to go. Um, oh, you know, OK. It was a, a different mobile game. Uh, I, I see what you're talking about. The problem with some mobile games, I think, is because I've tried other other mobile gacha game type things. I don't even remember their names. Like, okay, so I played Genshin, obviously, and I loved Genshin. I played it for quite some time. It was addicting. I tried Honkai Impact. It didn't really, it, it was Genshin-like, but it didn't really have the same, you know, I didn't care too much about it like I did Genshin. Uh, what are some other mobile games I've played? Obviously, Pokemon Go. I'm a little 46, dude. I got a bunch of hundos. I got shinies. Up. I still play. Monster Hunter Now uh, is another mobile game I'm playing. Uh, summoning something was something I played for a little bit. And Unknown Knights was another thing. But the issue that I have with some of those other games that try to like compete with Raid, for an example, like Dragonair, I think, is another one that's that, that I tried out but wasn't really feeling it is a lot of those games just throw everything at you and just give you everything right away. And they don't stop for some time. Now, Raid does do that. They give you a lot. But for some reason, Raid is able to do it at the right rate and within moderation. Because if Raid just gave me everything and made it super duper easy, I don't think I would enjoy it so much. I don't, I don't think that I, I'd stay in it for as long as it is. it has the right amount of it's easy it's attainable but it's still challenging like women i love my wife or i just because just like chasing you, you know what i mean when you're chasing at, and, and hopefully it's not a touchy topic but like when i was still in the dating game before i met my wife who i love and you know a M B, what's up? It's like, uh, thank you for coming by. How's your morning, night, or evening? Yeah, but it's like, it's, like, it's like chasing a girl, right? So let's say you have girl A who basically is just there and accepting, and you know, she just she just gives herself to you uh, emotionally. That's great and that's fun, but you know, I'm just speaking realistically, and, and it's the same way backwards. I've, I've, you know, and we'll talk about that. It's just like it, it, she gives herself to you completely. That's fun, but it's not lasting. But if you get the girl who, if you go for girl B, who is more of a, you know, easy, attainable, but it's not like given to you, 
like her her love isn't reciprocated immediately and there's like a challenge that challenge is something that that you would want so raid is really good at being girl b it's kind of like dark souls in a way where it's just like it's it's you know it's attainable but they make it hard and that's why i love playing dark souls that was a weird tangent to go off for serena was the game oh i've seen that you just got up nice well welcome we're, we're talking about fateless um ash joined fateless the team in fateless fateless is making a making a video game and we're talking about how um we think it, it might do better than than raid hopefully it does better than raid and how we win in in any situation and they hit the timelines on that type of stuff but it's so, uh, it's definitely copy, happening hang out. and i think with the the creative group that we've got oh it's a wonderful to, game to kind of like form the direction of the game i actually think it will be as i One said earlier favorites. like you know something which will rival this this genre and and surpass it yeah, yeah and when we I say the does. genre i mean what can you tell us about the game if anything at this point obviously you're looking at what around two years out at this point yeah probably about 20 months okay. um is is the timeline from and, and we are already working on the game so we we yeah. started pre-production. You, okay. you showed me a very cool visual that we can yeah, show. Yeah, man. Oh. 20 months. So a little under two years. What year is that? The game's coming out in a little under two years. So that's that's still some, some ways from now. But honestly, let me tell you something. The older I get, the faster time moves, dude. It's weird. I remember being young, always being... Oh, I want. I always saying things like, "I just want to grow up. I just want to grow up. I just want to grow up already." I'm almost thirty already, dude. And time isn't slowing down. Hey Siri, how far is twenty months from now? That's not the right question. Hey Siri, what will the date be twenty months from now? June 2025. So June 2025, right around my birthday, is when their game is supposedly going to be launched. And I'm excited for it. But also, I'll be 30 fucking one, dude. <laughs> I'm going to be 31 when this game comes out. But they say 30 is the new uh, 20 or something. Dude, oh my gosh. Let me hit you with something. Ugh. My 20s, my early 20s went by so quickly. 20 to 25 was was interesting. Like, you know, self-discovery, relationships, finding yourself and traveling, etc. I, I was in the military. So I, I did the military thing. I served my country. I got out in 2017. And then I was like, okay, what the fuck do I do now? Went to college and I met my wife, I think around 20... I met her and we were we started out being friends for about a year. I think I was 23, I think. I'm I'm losing track. But anyway, uh, I mean I'm I'm missing the point. I feel like I didn't really find what I wanted in life until I was 25. And I didn't know that the direction I wanted to go towards was content creation and doing YouTube until recently in my 20 20 my my 20 when I was 20 when I, I am 29. And I'm almost 30, and I've seen a lot of people say, like, oh, when, when you turn 30, that's when, like, your career starts to take off, and you're, you're really starting to be able to fund. And, and I think a big thing is being able to have the money, and I'm starting to understand and see it. When you have the money, you're able to create the time and chase the dreams that you've always been wanting to chase, but that doesn't really start and ramp up until 30. I think. I'll let you know when I get there. But yeah. So, I don't know why I got on that ta tangent, but that's a little slice of life for you. Oh, I Earlier. wish I could just throw it up on stream, but Me I'm too. actually not allowed. No, and no, no, but it's very I'm cool. Always, I'm the guy, like, people are... Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to be freaking 31 or 32 or 30. 31, 32 when this game comes out. Put me under wraps because they're like... Hades, don't leak stuff. Don't leak. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to watch uh, myself. So what can you tell uh, us about the game itself, if anything, at this point? The first yeah, game. Yeah, so... So we absolutely know it's the first game will be a hero collector RPG in a fantasy world. Um, we want the visual style to be kind of like high fantasy stroke, dark fantasy, 
we're not going down that kind of like anime yeah. feel, you know. So, yeah. so um, more Ray, yeah. less Genshin. Exactly. Uh, aesthetically, right. yeah, aesthetically. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we are going to be working with a large IP. Yeah. So yes. This is um, we, we can't drop who that is, but this is big in terms big. of the news, right? So yeah. In terms of us trying to rival uh, <clears throat> IP, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe correct me in the comments. I think IP is individual or intellectual property, meaning somebody who's uh, like a big company who's already established and well known. I think. For others in this type of space, well, a large IP naturally draws eyes. It has credibility, all those type mm -hmm. of things. So that's something which was really important to us in terms of our plan. Like this is something we wanted for our first game. Um, it's a game mode which gives you PvP that, I guess the, the wording is probably like normalized, so it's not a pay-to-win PvP mode. Um, mm. And we're kind of working through how that can work and, and uh, how we make that enjoyable. You know, so yeah. that's a really important like point in terms of our game design to be different from what is already out there, really. Mm. Um, and then obviously, uh, well, not obviously, actually, community is really important in our game design. So we want for there to be really fun, so to talk about those two points, right? You talked about PvP not being a Kraken fest. Have you guys tried Live Gold Arena? Where... Oh, shit. Trying to do Live Arena in Gold is is not like I have an end game account, and let's let's do let's do a fight real quick. Like I. I... I'm going to get matched up. Every time I get matched up now, it's with somebody who's got like plus four champions and Fendel. Okay. We'll, we'll see. But like every time I fight somebody up in, in gold, it, it's always hard. It's, it's never easy. And it doesn't feel attainable. It just feels like as if you have high blessing plus, see what I mean? Like his first champion that comes out is a high level blessing Pokemon with empowerment. So it's, it's kind of like, um, Jeez, what do, what, I, what do I do? You just got the 3K today? Nice, dude. Congrats. Yeah, Synth is putting in work, dude. Synth, you're putting in work. Let's move this so we can at least watch this in the background. Yeah, so they have that insight in terms of realizing that Right, let's just focus on this. Uh, let's see here. Sun Wukong. Uko? I feel like Uko would be pretty nice. Yeah, uh, yeah let's bring Uko in. I kind of want to bring Lydia in, but maybe cardio. Yeah, but to rehit that, to to continue and finish my tangent. Fudge, fudgical stakes. This guy's a dirty bomber. A dirty, dirty bomber. You dirty bomber, you. Hefrak. Oh, we got to ban Warlord. We have to ban Warlord. But this Duchess is going to mess me up. I can feel it. 20%, 19%. We're going with 20. Now I might be able to outspeed him. My Yumiko is decently fast. Oh, so is... Oh, wait, no, he banned my Yumiko. He bans my Yumiko. He did not last that long. Yeah, so basically, if you if you pay, so I'm really focused. That 
this is not my favorite um area this is not my favorite area in the game i, I don't enjoy doing live arena how the damn his son wukong smacked me hard dude Basically, if you pay, and, like, I fought a level 75 yesterday. He was level 75, but he had, like, plus four Rodos and plus Dutch something Duchess with Yumiko and Ramantu at level 75. I was like, what? And I was like, there's no way this guy, and he, he, was, he was up in the 3000s for Live Arena. I was like, there's no, there's no way. Yeah, that Wukong, I, I, even I was speechless. I was like, wait, wh wh what? Damn, he brought Taurus. All right, we got to pick Rodos because if he has um, Sippy, he might have Rodos. So we're going to do that. And I'll probably need to bring in... Yep. Okay. Let's bring in Duchess. And Candy. Where's Candy at? Why is everybody out here trying to use bombs, dude? You guys need to quit it. I'm going to try and outspeed him. We'll get rid of the Siffy. But yeah, it was crazy. It just goes to show that in, in Raid, if, if all you do is pay, you could definitely cut time significantly. Because you can get to wherever you need to, wherever you want to be in, in Raid. As long as you you just you pay. Did someone try bad L in arena? No, I haven't. Have, is he is he good? Oh my gosh. It, now, to be honest, I'm not the best at raid at all, but you know what I mean? So like I, I do I do enough, but I haven't like been in to it. I'm not the perfect example of somebody who <laughs> <laughs> Two losses in a row. Jesus. Hey, but what's up, Rudenoid? How you doing? How's your morning? Or night. Being in gold makes you good enough. Yeah, that's a you know positive take on it. I think if uh, she, well, let's put in, let's put in Tormund, and then we'll get rid of Warlord. Although he probably has stone skin, he probably has stone skin as well. Ah, he knew it. Okay. Opposite of morning, good evening, or good night. All right. And I get polymorphed off the rip. There you go. We'll love to see it. You just love to see it. Get him, sheep. Wow.
Yeah, no, to be honest, I just, I just, I, I just straight up suck at doing PvP content. Almost got all of them with the sheep, dude. <sighs> yeah. That sheep was OP. I at least want one. Why Why am I getting four back? I mean, because I'm in gold, gold. As soon as I hit gold, my rate of losing just increased exponentially. And now the game's having trouble giving me anybody. They're like, all right, well, this guy, you know, he he needs like a freebie and we're, we can't really find anybody because you're in gold, so. The game just doesn't want me to be in. They're like, hey, just leave the game mode. Don't, don't, uh, just take a break. Take a breath. Can't find you an opponent. They're saying we can't find anybody who sucks as hard as you do. Jesus. You don't even bother with Labyrinth? Yeah, I don't bother with it either to Ser... Serin... Seri? Seri? Ser... No, I forgot. And then I also hate the guys that, that take forever to choose their champion. Oh, this guy's pretty good about it. But sometimes I, I get the guy who, who for some reason is just like taking up the full minute to choose their champions. And yeah, I'm just like, all right. All right, they, so they gave me somebody who's a lower level. They're, they're giving me mercy. Just throw Tormund in. If I win this one, I'm not even going to count it as a win. I'm going to count it as a freebie that they gave me. Yep, people will, will stall. People will build stall teams like you know, they'll just add Krisk, Ursiga, uh, Helicath, UDK. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm able to. I don't know, I'm getting excited. They they basically just gave gave me a gave me a fight. Looks like mine outside of Kaimar and the last one he picked. I see. I was about to talk shit about that. I was like once I'm I'm glad I read your I was about to talk mad shit about the team. But uh, then again, who am I to talk? I just lost four fights in a row. The the one good thing I do like about arena is the arena bonuses. So you're able to you know add add extra points, extra points of speed for like Fire Knight, for an example. So that's good. I enjoy getting little st statistical bonuses. But for you to win. Let's, let's use this last one here. For you to win, it's just... And I'm not going to take the time to get good. I don't have the time to get good. I work almost six days a week. You have thick skin? Yes, sir. I'm just joking, man. You, I, I got nothing but, but love and positivity to spread. Wait, yeah, I work six times a week, and then I try to do content creation whenever I have time. I don't have time to, make, to, to sit there and, and do, um, you know... PvP all the time. LTRB. James. James? I wish I did have the time for it. If I if I had more time, I'd be pumping out more content and I'd be focusing on I'm trying to get, you know, my arena team up. Then again, it's just like why? Karima. I would love to have a Rima. I guess the goal is is the stats then that kind of makes sense. And then if you're going for Quintus, which I don't know if you guys if you guys have seen footage on Quintus, we could probably look it up later, but 
He seemed under, under he seemed underwhelming. You know I go on with cardio. I just I I want to get rid of Harima. I just don't like Harima. Getting rid of Harima would be an emotional ban though. Which you're not supposed to do when you're doing live arena. Don't ban emotionally. You have to think about it. But I'm going to do it. Off the rip. I'm just good. I should ban Kaimar. But I really want to get rid of Harima. Did he just... What does he do? Pick, dude. Come on. Okay. He brought UDK. Why? For what? I mean, I'll take it. But at the same time, I wanted to, you know, put a little... Throw my chops in there. I wanted to... I wanted to show off a little bit. Don't just give it to... I need one more fight. I probably threw it off. I probably chose champions that he... Uh, he was planning to choose and so for gold you can't choose there's no um repeat champion so if he chooses duchess i can't choose duchess and if i choose cardio he can't choose cardio arbiter you know always start off with yumiko gotta get taurus in and then I usually go rotos and cardio and then throw in candy but i like to pair candy with um duchess lydia Uko has too much RNG involved, so off the rip, I'm trying to ban Uko. Please do not pick Harima. He's taking a while. He's looking. He probably had Taurus or, or Rotos and was planning on using them. I could throw in Tormund. He's got Georgie. Oof. Uh, Let's throw in Tormund. Because they got a couple of buffs coming in. Uh, we're going to do that and then we'll get rid of Uko. Uko has way too much RNG. Nutcracker, yep. Did you guys know that's his story? They were at a war. Um, so Georgid was in, uh, in a war, was involved in a war against Nishak. And so Sir Nick... From the sacred faction was like, hey, Georgia, you uh you willing to sacrifice anything to save Christmas? Georgia was like, Yeah, yeah, I am. And Sir Nick was like, All right, bet. So he turns him into a nutcracker, but it makes him a lot more powerful. So little cool tidbit if you didn't already know that. Alright, we gotta get Georgie. Oh no! My Rotos wasn't fast enough. That's why you got to build your Rotos fast. So that crap like that doesn't happen. But it's okay. Because we have the God Hand! Boom! Get Taurus, motherfucker! Vengeance is not yours. Sorry. I saw the opportunity. I saw the moment. I had to take it. But yeah, that's my little tidbit about uh, Krakens in PvP. Guild Wars, we want for there to be reason to team up with your friends, uh, to utilize your, your kind of guild mates, either a champion or their, their facility in some way. Like So there's definitely going to be a community focus on, 
on the way the game is played. Love that. Love that. Obviously, you know, we've talked about this a lot, right? But, uh, yeah. That's something that I think is absolutely key for long-term success. So, uh, yeah, really cool to hear. The hype is high, uh, uh, Hades. You know, like, I'm even seeing... <laughs> we've been watching this one video for an hour. <laughs> Taurus is OP. In my comments, and no one even knows for the past until this home, video's the, the lighting is... Can you guys give me, give me, give me a minute? I'll be right back. I'll get more water. Project, but I'm even yeah. saying, like... You know, we'll wait till the Hades game comes out or whatever, you know? So yeah, yeah. are you worried? I want to be real with you because I would be a little bit worried. Not worried because I know you have confidence and you believe in the team and the project, but the hype being this high and everybody associating your name with a level of excellence, do you, are you at all a little bit worried deep down on delivering uh, to these expectations? So obviously there's, there's going to be an element of exactly what you said there, you know, yeah. my... <laughs> I guess my name's on the line. Like, does anything wrong? The they're line. like, we'll you just know. wait till Hades game comes out. You're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah. but I've got to say, like, I'm, yeah. I'm in the other direction. Like, I'm, firstly, I'm confident. Yep. I've seen some of the initial work that's being done from from the team. So Magic Media is a studio that we're working alongside. Yes. If you think about it, like, we're the creative direction. Magic Media then basically make it working through the game. And and honestly, like the team we've got there, it's. It's like just an extension of our team. This is the, the cool thing. Like, like-minded dudes, massively into kind of like fantasy RPGs, um, you know, love a lot of the, the different IPs that we love. So all of that stuff is like making a lot of sense. And you know, we're coming with our idea boards. You know, we do these kind of big mood boards, as you know. Um, but they also come with theirs. And, like, and we're kind of like, wow, that's actually a really interesting, different take on, on what we could do. So... It's, it's quite a lot of kind of like cool, um, yeah, unity of, 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 of idea, I guess, which is cool. But also we're starting to see some stuff come through in, in just like mock-up, you know, they call it, um, what they call it? White, ah, let me just, white boxing. So they call yeah. it white boxing, which is kind of like level design, uh, very early, early stage stuff. But what I showed you earlier, it's just like their initial version, which they've mocked up in a week, which, which we're basically using to work with the IP on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if that's a week's work, then I cannot wait yeah. for what we get at the end of this. It's, like, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. I, not to overhype it, because I think this is accurate. It's really, I don't know, raid level or watcher level, what you'd expect from the premium uh, titles aesthetically, you know, yeah. and it looks, and it brings its own flavor too. It's not just like a carbon copy or anything like that, it, but it looks really, yeah. really cool. Uh, selfishly, Hades, why do you decide to invite yours truly to the party? <laughs> Look, so I, I guess I, I don't. I don't need to suck up, but why did I, why did you want to work with me? <laughs> yeah, well, why did I join? In terms of in terms of this game and, and our team, so we definitely wanted people that understand the genre, have got a really great community, a really great energy about them. Um, you know, you've got. Of a fantastic audience like all of these things start to help us because ultimately what we need to do is we need to launch a game which is which is awesome as it, in right. its own right but it has to get enough eyeballs on the game it has to be covered in the right way um and we just felt like all right i got my, my ideas, second cup of coffee your your links with amg <laughs> Same video for super cool you know in terms of well i mean that's the point that is the point of of why i do raid and coffee to be able to connect and have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with you guys, for you guys to get to know me personally. So I stop these videos, I react to them, I give my thoughts, my points, my views. And if you're into that, you know, you, you can, uh, you know, share with me. Let's have a discussion about it. I'm always very open to having, you know, respectful conversations about all of our opinions. And plus, this is really fun to catch up. This is a great way for me to catch up with the community and what's going on you just got this kind of like massive network your your channel which you did before kind of raid and watchers mm. has got a kind of next level of it's really community contacts or contacts in the industry which a lot of us don't have on the team right now so it, whenever i'm looking at should we add someone to the team it's like what does that person bring as a person as an individual as a, a kind of you know you know, your personality, that type of stuff and, and skills, but also yeah, he's got a great what do they add, which we don't currently have? 
and honestly, you know, for yourself, dude, it's it's just there's just so much. Uh, <laughs> it's just so you. much experience. Like, Thanks. It feels very yeah. self-serving asking the question, but I wanted to like kind of tie it in yeah. from your perspective. Uh, you know, Sham, who I've known for a long, long time, Dan, who I've known for you know a while as well. But Sham initially yeah. reached out and he's like, "You need to talk to the guys." I had well, already that, that been... begs the question. Here's going off another on another tangent. I, I want to find out. So let's look at. Uh, oh, look, it's me. So let's look at Hell Hades. How many subs does he have? 200k, very respectful. Uh, respectable. He probably makes a decent amount of money with 100, 200k subscribers with tens of thousands of, of watch time. Because you get paid for... As, as YouTube content creators, not just in Raid, we get, I think it's like our, our CPM what what we get paid through advertisements through like Google AdSense for an example and people watching is like only five dollars. I think it's like five dollars per one thousand views. So if you're getting tens of thousands of views, that's like that's about five bucks, and that's just for Google or that's just for for the ad revenue. That's not sponsorships and 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 other things. If you're selling your own things, so he's probably making a good amount of money with that. Um, but the the reason I, I wanted to stop and look, I wanted to see Ash. Ash has what? Almost two hundred k. Let's just type in Raid Shadow Legends. You got MTG Jedi. He has uh fifteen. We're all eagerly. Who else? Scratch. What is up, everyone? Almost fifty. Blazing. Almost 3K. You got me. I almost. I, you know, I just broke 200. Smiley, Leela, Cold Brew. Almost 50. Yeah. So, what? What's this? Papa Drock is a good one. Yeah. So when when he, I guess as a the reason part of the reason he wanted Ash on his team was because he has so many viewers you know what i mean so when you have somebody who has that big of a following and you add them to your team that is advertisement on top of that ash is a great personality uh he could be you know a face of their community of fateless so that that would be it's a smart direction 200k is also a lot but you're only 1k off or 200 is a lot but you're only a k off yeah only I'll be consistent. I love doing content creation. I love video editing. I like putting things out there. So I'm going to keep doing this for a hot minute. Watching from afar, you know, this is probably maybe two months ago that we had this conversation. Yeah. Uh, I already been watching you guys from afar and being like, okay, I was, I'm not going to lie. I was developing a little bit of FOMO, you know, I'm like, wait, wait, they're going to, they're going to kill it. These guys are going to kill it. And then yeah, Sham yeah. approached and he's like, let's talk about, you know, how we can get you as part of the team. As you mentioned, I have a company of five years. Uh, we do marketing, we do game launches, we do events, we do the whole nine. And we have 73 now full-time employees and it's a massive yeah, thing. It's, crazy, it's grown well beyond me, wow. but a lot of my time. Ash makes a lot of money to be able to have a company that's lasted and throve, thro thrived, 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 thrived. Hey Siri, what's the past sense of thrive? Thriven? Thrived or thriven. Okay. Yeah. Roblox, uh, thank you. If you got to sleep, you got to sleep. I do appreciate you sticking around and hanging out, as always. Bye. Have fun with your sleep, I mean. Thank you. I'm still See you next allocated. Time. So my question initially was, okay, how can I be a part of Fateless and yeah. run AMG and also make... Oh, shit. I didn't finish my last train of thought. Basically, Ash is really doing really well. Content for all these channels, but we actually found a really, what I think is a really awesome mix where, you know, I'm not spending, maybe I'm spending a few hours a week or something, you know, helping the team, but they're really impactful hours. Like we did a, uh, I hope we can say this, but we did a mock yeah. pitch uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, right before the IP, like I, me and MTash were pretending to be the IP, you know, and you guys yeah, were yeah. pitching us. Uh, also talking marketing strategy and everything, like the whole nine. So uh, I feel like, 
uh, I guess to your point, I feel like my my skills in the industry, if you will, uh, are going to lend very well and map well to what you know you have right now on the team. And I feel, I mean, we're in this chat, like our team chat here, and it's the enthusiasm is is sky yeah. high and the collaborative nature and just the the overall vibes, man. I feel yeah. like that really does matter. Kind of like in a sports team, you know, like you need yeah. you just don't need just talent. You can get by on just talent sometimes, but when you have everybody working together. And have that energy it feels special yeah. and that's kind of what you guys have yeah he's right and that that goes with with pretty much anything in life not just when you're like creating a company but like friends for an example if you want to go out to the bar or or to a concert or anything when you want to go out you got to make sure that you're around people who have the right energy the right vibe personality vibe energy can make or break somebody because, for an example, if, if you're extremely talented, yeah, people will follow you. But I feel like you would do so much better if you had that extra uh, personality. So it's all about the energy. Quite interesting yeah. as well. Like when we yeah. do, so we do like our round tables, we call them, where it's like, let's focus in on a topic. So <laughs> it could be table. monetization, could be PVP, could be you know, hero leveling, anything, anything at all, honestly. And what's very cool is when you've got individuals like, yourself me from a, a just kind of like background different backgrounds and yeah and you, know, you have a very life a very long um, sales background as well you should add yeah. before before raid before content <laughs> oh, exactly yeah yeah like 20 years in sales yeah. but then we bring in 20 people. years how old is this guy how old is hell hades do you guys know because he only looks like he's in his late 30s maybe maybe 40 like sap who's got a great mind a great oh, mind yeah, when it comes right? to like systems and Will this break a game and you know um economies and that type of stuff which which actually is very different from the way most of us think in the group um yeah and you bring someone like sham in who's actually got game design expertise and understands how things should work together m tash is coming from it's like this uh I, I guess this walk of life where he was new to a hero collector to like a gotcha style gameplay and he's almost he's like, old. I hate it, but I'm addicted to it. So yeah, what I yeah, want to yeah. do is make this game better than what's already out there. And, you know, so he's asking some actually quite challenging questions around, Check the do we hair. need this in our game? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen some guys who are like in their 40s with gray hair, even late 30s with gray hair. That's why I'm kind of I'm like, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Let's go with 40s. He's, he's solid 40s, right? Yeah, do we need the same sort of... Yeah, but but... You're right, David. Check the gray hair. Stamina mechanics that we see in the games right now. Do we need silver cost in, in removing gear? Do we? Uh, so he's really challenging no. the, the kind of... Do not make the mistake, Hell Hades, of making us pay to take our clothes off. The status quo, I guess, of these games. And for me, that's a really a really cool dynamic to have because you know we get to talk through these, these topics in full. And then when we go to Magic Media, we're like, look, We've got Definitely a really 40s, yeah. strong foundation of what we think is going to work. We need you to implement it like this, and then they'll overlay with their expertise as well. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really great team in all that's, that's kind of coming together here. Absolutely. And you have, I, I don't even, I, I feel like I'm going to miss people, but like uh, Chosen's a part of the team. You have yeah, Staff, Chosen's who you mentioned, too. Dan, Fixion. Uh, anybody else who's like a, I, I know you probably have a lot of people, but is there anybody else that my viewers have heard of or whatever that's uh, affiliated with this project right now? I know you also work with so many people on the HH, so I kind of get confused yeah. about everything, you know? Yeah. So, so that's the only the other kind of like, I think, right? yeah, the, the kind of core member is Dirk who yes. uh, actually worked with, with Sham in, in previous, yeah, um, Skeleton previous man, gameplay yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah which, and, and Dirk's Change actually, lighting, um, losing the sunlight. If, it's almost like a, an in between Sham and Asaf. So Dirk's definitely more on the, you know, this is this is where we set the limits of characters. This is like almost like the play tester, you know, and it needs to make sure that um, there's not someone who's out there totally broken. Yeah. Um, and yeah, looking at that type of side of things. So very similar to like a Asaf. And I think we got to get you having on that two team. minds like that is good because that would be awesome. It would be nice, but. I'll be honest with you, like I don't, I don't know what I could bring to the company. It's kind of sad to say now that I think about it, but it's like, what do I, what do I have to offer a gaming company? I could be like a video game tester, but other than that, like I don't, I don't have much that could. I don't have anything that I can think of right now that would add 
to their team, that would make me invaluable. That isn't easily replaced. And that's just being honest. But I appreciate the sentiment. Super um, good. Yeah, yeah. It just, you can you just know, tell, by you... the way, that they handle everything, too. It could be like we could be talking about something totally unrelated to design. Although on that tangent, I wish I started doing content creation for Raid like four or five years ago when I started playing. Imagine if I had gotten in early. That Well, I mean, I guess this game, this game that they're about to make is is the chance to get in early. So, you know, we got to do it. But then again, all the other uh, content creators who are already on, on Raid will probably start doing... We'll probably start doing the, the Fateless game as well. But we'll see. I mean, I'm going to keep trying. No reason to stop. Design or balance. But they'll, their attention to detail, both of them, is just like like very minuscule stuff that I would never catch in a million years. They're like, but yeah. wait about this. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Whatever, you know. So yeah. uh, anyway, I, I'm thrilled to be a part of the squad. Obviously, they'll exp they'll be, you know, hopefully we'll continue to chat here throughout the next couple of years, 20 months or whatever. Sure. <laughs> give updates and stuff like that. For now, you guys can check yeah. out. You can see the fateless.gg website has been. What are people saying? Proud of you guys. Looking forward to it. I thought HH and Ash were moving their separate ways, but it was wrong. Okay, yeah, I'm excited. First time in my almost 50 years. <laughs> Full nerd about a game coming out. Now has Ash, Saffron, Chosen. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Definitely going to be awesome. All right, let's see. Let's see. What the heck? Mr. Beast just came out with a video 12 minutes ago, and 1.3 million people have already seen it. It is Mr. Beast, so. Yep. Shout out to Bronco, doing what he does. Realms, that's right, this is not- yeah, Everybody's on this Watcher of Realms thing. I don't know yet. Have you guys played Watcher of Realms? Because- the, Not the first, not the second, but- Because people are talking about it. The third dedicated video I've made to this game here on the channel, Watcher of Realms. By now, you probably already know, probably sick of me telling you about it, but I am thrilled to be covering Watcher of Realms. I love this game so much that even though today... Is that a record? I don't know, but my reference is this. Let me show you. A little behind-the-scenes peek. Oh, cool, I gained this up. Um, where's uh, my last video, for an example? By the way, I have one guy who, who somebody is out here. It's always one guy coming out here and giving me a dislike on, on my less than two minute video. What is this? I, I'm kidding. I know it's the internet. It just is what it is. People are just going to, you know, drop dislikes just, just because. But I mean, just like, if there's something you don't like, give me input, give me feedback so I can I can I can understand what I'm doing wrong so I can improve. You know what I mean? But there's there's one guy who just goes around to my videos and drops dislikes. It's interesting. Uh okay, what was I trying to think? I keep losing my thought. Okay, so this is my last video that I posted. How do I check it out? And I released it. I got 26 views and I, I dropped it freaking, I don't know, last night at 1045. And it only has 25 views. Yeah, trolls, pretty much. Dude, trolls. That's it. That's all you got to say. So for him to be doing 1.3 million in 12 minutes, like this is my, this is my frame of reference. I think it's amazing. Today's video is a sponsor. Shout out to Moonton for sponsoring today's video here. Uh, I actually love this game so much that I'm covering it on a brand new, well, not even new anymore. It's about a month old YouTube channel. That's right. It's Ash. 
Watcher of Realms, and I have to say the community has been fantastic over there. Uh, you may have uh, noticed, by the way, that we have tons of beginner content on this channel and some familiar faces as well, right? Uh, in this game today, I'm going to kind of give you an overview, a little bit of my experience playing the game, what I love about it, uh, kind of comparing some things to Raid, both positive and negative as well. I'm going to be honest here, and, uh, and obviously I'm not biased. I love both games. So uh, basically this game... Uh, a buddy of mine, Beanie Senpai, was showing me some of the gameplay. It's it's very similar to Raid with some quality of life differences. But it's m basically where you do tower defense. Try to find some footage of it. Is this it? Yeah, so it's a tower defense game. And I do like tower defense games. I think they're pretty pretty fun. But this on the is board, what it looks like. Right? I'm trying to keep my eye on this little battle over here. I'm going to go ahead. So you see they, they come in from there. They're summoned and they walk through from here. And you can see the path that they follow. And their objective, the enemy objective, is to come over here and try to destroy your crystals. And you deploy champions onto the field. Yeah, he is. Dude, Ash, Ash puts out so much content on a daily basis and not just with one channel. But I'm sub to like his other channels, for an example. Uh, where is it? Like he's got other channels that I'm sub to, sub to, to. Like I'm sub to his chat with Ash channel. Um, I was here, but I don't really need champion guides. And then Watcher of Realms, he's he's making he's making some good money with it. This one's almost at a million here. But it's so much work, and like I don't have the money to pay people yet but if i if i did have the money you bet i would that so i record my videos and then i spend like eight hours for an example whenever i can find the time to edit my own videos and it takes a long time to do and then i gotta think thumbnails um thinking of the idea thinking of titles and 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 the script takes a long time to do but once i get to the point where i can afford to to hire a team hire people to edit my videos and all I have to do is sit there and record I'll probably start pumping out content on a daily basis just like Ash does but then again ideas are hard so yeah I'm not I'm not entirely convinced that this is I, I won't really know until I try but yeah let's see Nubs has his uh, master class. Let's see what Chosen has to say about the... They have come out with a permanent mythical champion fusion that's going to be added here to the fusion tab. And these are usually a net positive good thing. Well, to be honest, I think everybody has already talked about the Lady Mikage fusion, so I don't really feel like uh, going into that. There's Gavin. What What's going on, guys? Hope everybody's having a great day. Today, we're going to be talking about a game-changing epic champion. One of my favorite new epics to use in Hydra, and that is White Dryad Nia. Mm. If you are missing a decrease speed champ, a solid decrease speed champion, she is amazing. She is Boyd Affinity from the Sylvan Watchers faction. The decrease speed she has on the A1 is absolutely crazy. Gives you a ton of opportunities to, you know, take extra hits at the boss, which you really want. You kind of need decrease speed to and get I think high I've damage in comps, especially if you don't too. have a ton Myself. of damage Myself. dealers that are like OP. If you don't have a Crizias, if you don't have, you know, multiple nuts, you don't have multiple Geos, Husk, what have you. So I have you one out of like damage out. coming here and there. Decrease speed is definitely going to she is help you to nice. take those extra turns that you need, especially when one of your champions gets devoured. And this is what makes this champion so special. Her A2 also has a cleanse. It is single target and gives them some heals as well. But it's also going to re reduce the cooldown of their skills by two turns, which can be very helpful if you... Uncommon only free to play? Oof. Uncommon only free to play. Oh, oh, there's my wife. I love her. 
Well, let's let's look at this. It's an interesting idea. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's done it. Oh, I'm I'm pretty sure we're not the only ones who's who entertained the idea or talked about it. But let's see who. Let's look at all the uncommons in each in each faction real quick. Because these guys are basically just food for me, right? For most of us. What does this one do? Twice has a 15% extra chance of improving critical hit. Champions turn meter by 15% it's critical. AoE two times, 10% chance, decreased speed. I think it could be a fun streaming type series, maybe. I've never thought about it to answer your, your question directly. But when I'm thinking about content, I have to think about is it it would definitely be different. Well let, let's let's find out if it's actually different. Where's uh oops, that's not it. Oh, that's not it either. Uh there it is. Let's see. Um Raid Shadow Legends Uncommon only. Okay, so Erroneous, this this content creator, did a series on this already. Commons and uncommons only. What's up, guys? Erroneous here with another raid, Shadow Le And then we'd have to look at what his views are, are like. So a little over a thousand here. What's up, guys? Erroneous here with another raid, Shadow What's up, guys? Erroneous here with another... What's up, guys? Erroneous. 300. What's up, guys? Erroneous here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, we're on the Commons and Uncommons Only account. We are on day number... Let's check this out. So, day number 120, episode... What's up, guys? Erroneous here. Yeah, so this seems to not get too many views. I'd have to think about it more, basically. But yeah, it's an interesting idea. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to continue, Fateless. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fateless YouTube channel. Today I want to introduce myself. I am Paul or most people will know me as oh. Safira where I've been working on the HH Gaming side with Raid Shadow Legends for many years. I want to kind of give you an introduction to me uh, as a person, as my own personal life, my background in the gaming world as a gamer, but also in the gaming tech, the gaming industry, and kind of like what I will be doing to uh, help the Fateless team and working with the Fateless team to deliver on well, our promise to create a, an amazing game. So most of you probably know by now I've been working with HH Gaming, with uh, Hell Hades, with Fiction, and a little bit with H Sham H in the past as well uh, on the on various different projects, but predominantly Am on our website hellhades.com and of course the Raid Optimizer. So my background is a little bit in terms of SEO, web marketing. I also work on the oh, development wow. of some of the tools that we have and the maintenance of the website and also- Well, that, you know, that's handy to have, to have somebody who was able to do, to work on SEO optimization as well as um, all the other things he mentioned, that's that's valuable. So by now, I'm a part-time content creator, and I'm doing videos over on the HH Gaming Network YouTube channel, predominantly covering uh, Raid, but we do play other games. So my background and experience are in the last couple of years has helped uh, position us in, in the position that we're in, that we actually can launch Faintless Games. So I've been a gamer now for approximately 15 years of my life. I'm just turning 32. Oh, it's 33 in January. The, the time is, you know, we're getting old now. But I, I've been playing. This guy is almost my age. I'm, I'm only a couple years under him. 
in games for the majority of my adult and teenage life. And really it's the escapism and also it appeals to my ability to min-max as well that I really love about gaming. Some of the first games that I ever played was uh, Lord of the Rings Online. It is an MMO RPG, one of the bigger sort of oh, that games that have game. been able to stand alongside World of Warcraft. Ironically, I have never played World of Warcraft, which I'm sure a lot of people in the chat and the comments will probably be shocked that i've never played the game i think most gamers have at some point touched world of warcraft but i am a true diehard it tolkien fan so i've played a lot of lord of the rings online i've probably clocked well, actually, over imagine if i made a normal team only using commons and uncommons but i, I think that would be hard to do i'd have to like take a look at each uncommon and, and common and see but yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. Yeah, I'd have to take the time and, and like look at all of them. Who off the top of our heads could fit the bill? I'm thinking Outlaw Monk could do poisons. You're not getting too many buffs, though, with some of these guys. Cultist. Ally Protect. Ed Monitor does ally protection. He would have to be built with high resist. That's on a two-turn cooldown. High HP, high resist, probably in a bolster set. Bolster, regen, guardian set. High resist, um, low speed maybe? No, we would have a speed to him. Shield guard, yeah, shield guard is definitely somebody. So he could be a good support. Decrease speed on the A1. Increase crit on all allies. Oh, we just did that. Sniper? AoE twice. 10% chance. Books up to a... 25 for a uh, decreased speed. A we one turn. Yeah, armager for sure. Or poisons. Memory of a goldfish. Vampire. A we heals. Oh, that's only for the first for her. AoE, three turn cooldown, 100% chance of placing the small. Is that the small? Is it 5%? The bigger version? Yeah, I think it's the small. Increase attack on all allies. AoE, decrease accuracy. One, decrease speed. One, decrease defense. Gotta throw Death Knight in for sure. Cause what's the minimum to get the top chest? Is it isn't it only like one one point six seven? But then again, like the gear requirements are, are probably going to be a lot higher and harder to do because stats. I could probably try doing something like that. He's using Cronum. With um, when they have that, that free silver event, that would be. Oh, I forgot they had the clan boss. Dang. What do we get? Nope. Roll it up and see. Yeah, it'd be a fun, fun and interesting concept. I think instead of looking individually at each champion, I should probably use the filter in the champion section and see who brings the specific buffs that I need. 
I guess I would start with debuffs. So we definitely need somebody with decrease. De uh, there is no decrease defense. Small decrease defense. There is the small version of it. But we would need AoE. Decrease attack. There's another one. Poisons would do well. Are these bombs? No, those, those are bombs. Poisons. Is that... Let's see, is this AoE? That's one. You pull in a second Necmo? Bro, that's another Hydra team for you, dude. Yeah, it'd be hard to do. A lot more time would have to be thought up. Five thousand hours since it ever came out. I played it when it first came out. I played all the different classes. Although I don't get to play it as much as I used to now because work commitments and time. One of the yeah. best things about MMORPGs is the ability to create communities, and that is what. Yeah, I, I, I have a wife, kids, and a full-time job. So I feel you. And then Mtashed. I want to explain who I am and what I bring to the table. Let's get started. I've been a hardcore gamer for a long time. I even entered tournaments for Halo back when I was 16 years wow. old. I've covered games like Diablo, Destiny, and The Division. Lots of Ds on my channel. <laughs> but I've also been gambling, sorry, dabbling in Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact. Those games took my channel from around 300,000 followers to over 900,000. And since playing that, I've decided to try out a lot of other gotcha type games to find the perfect one. But that didn't happen. So my goal is to help make it. And that's why I'm joining up with Fateless. Now, I know that's all sounds fine and dandy, but I want to talk about my experience in game dev as well. Anthem was the first experience I ever had with any sort of game development. I was flown out four different times as part of the EA Game Changers program, and multiple things that I discovered through the play sessions and through my feedback became actionable things that changed the game. One of them was the camera setups with flight, as well as the entire aim assist system having a change because of things I found. Now, I'm not going to claim that I made this game better because it ended up failing, <laughs> but yeah. I tried. I tried. Quick side note, Anthem was such an excellent concept to have, but in practice, it it failed miserably. Like, the whole idea that you could fly around like Iron Man and, and fight was tantalizing. It was a tantalizing idea. And then it just completely flopped. I think one of the things that killed it for me was that whenever you start a mission, you have to start from where you... from from the beginning, just like in Destiny. If you ever played Destiny, if you need to do a mission that's in the same area that you were just in once the mission ends you have to start all the way at the beginning for some odd reason it's so weird and then there there's the the loot mechanics which is kind of yeah but anyway i was part of roundtable discussions on destiny 1 and 2 as well as discussions directly with the developers about balance changes for pvp I helped on Outriders in the early days, as well as the new game Wayfinder, game. giving feedback that led to the change of one of the character's entire kits. I've played a lot of games, and I've given feedback on a lot of games, and some of them succeeded, and some of them failed. But with my experience in gaming, I tend to notice when something will be a problem, and I usually realize it's a problem a lot earlier than other people. Unfortunately, in my content creation career, there are many times where I call something out and I get called negative or a hater. And then a month later, everyone else realizes why something sucks or why a character is bad. And I believe that I can bring some real value to making sure that Fateless is making the game that you all deserve and that I want to play because I'm kind of picky.
I started my journey with content with Destiny, which is a looter shooter that has some PvP and MMO features. I like to grind. I like loot. I like building characters. Yeah, and too. I like PvP. And I think that I have a lot of experience from the games that I've covered in the past and just played in the past to give great actionable feedback on this game to help it improve. I'm a bit of a perfectionist at times and I can be critical of games, but that's because I love them. It's because I want them to be as good as humanly possible. And while it may anger the guys from time to time, I do not want to let this thing slip through the cracks. I do not want a product to go out the door that I'm not proud of myself. But with the team, I know we're set. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm jumping into this project is actually because of Hell Hades, or Simon himself. Don't tell him this because he'll get too cocky, but I actually... <laughs> yeah, so I think it's going to be a great addition to the Fateless team. It's two... It's two years basically out, but... Let's hope. Let's hope for it. Because, uh... Who doesn't want a, a new game? Especially with, with the kind of background that they're they're bringing in. So, who is this guy? Hey guys, this is Hunter introducing our Raid for Beginners series. Okay. Today, we're gonna. I wanted to check out my. You guys doing re reflex? All right, so my next video for Raid is going to be working on showing people how to make dragon teams. It's hard to come up with ideas because I I always get some type of comment saying like, oh, you know, I don't have those champions to do it. So I've started saying things like, oh, well, as long as you understand the mechanics and you understand how it works and you know what buffs and debuffs to bring etc yada 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 um you'll be able to do this but i've been trying to also venture into teams that can do certain dungeons but they only require epics and rares and i try to avoid voids but it's hard so i think what i'm going to start doing is introducing like multiple teams so not just one team but like two or three to show people different different avenues they could take but i crafted this one last night it was kind of i kind of threw it in it was midnight i want to see how it actually performs I have the, I know I preset I did the presets so I closed out a lot of their AoE abilities. This cold heart looks like it's about to yeah she's she's a goner. Okay, I think I have an, a a direction that I want to go with for when I do the video. I could talk about give me more of like a progressive type thing. Because who else could we essentially use? What if it was just like rares? Like a rare, a rare only dragon team. Let's check it. I think War Maiden would go nicely. AoE decrease defense. Elaine would help to clear the waves too, I think. We could bring him in as a healer. Aethel as well. These are champions that are pretty accessible to newer players. When you're trying to do content, especially for YouTube, it's important to figure out who your audience is. And most of my audience are newer players, I think. 
meaning they don't know too much about raids, so they'd be looking for content that, you know, my, my content would, should appeal to what's going to get me the most views, right? Without completely selling the fuck out. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll have a team something like this, rares only. I'll build another team that, you know, incorporates epics, and then I'll build one that has, um, like, Arbiter, for example, a Lego or two. And then I'll build an actual farming team for stage 20 so people can see progression, different different pinpoints. So they can say, okay, uh, as a beginner, I'll start off doing this, and then I can eventually develop into this. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But then I have to build these guys. So let's build Aethel real quick. Athel? Is Athel? No, she's not built yet. Oh, I guess she is, kind of. No masters? She does have the weaken and decrease defense on her A1, right? I was playing Raid for, sorry, doing 2019. And I only started streaming about eight or nine months ago. So I'd say bef I almost four years. I was doing it for about four years. And then I started streaming and doing content. How long have you been playing Raid? That's a good question, too. Now, these are unrealistic stats for newer players, but I don't have I don't have a new newer new player gear. Are we in an artifact enhancement event? Let me see real quick. We are. Okay, so I can I can upgrade comfortably though. Gotta make sure I'm efficiently building things. Alright, FL. Sorry, channel zero is where I hang out, so I always go to channel zero. What is this? What is this? What kind of crappy piece is that that got by? All right, let's upgrade it, then sell it. Or destroy it. Get the points, but then, oof, that's such a, this is bad. This is a bad piece. Let's get rid of that. Get out of here. Get out of here. Crit damage would be ideal. We definitely want some crit damage. And good accuracy, but we'll take this one. Put that. I have HP banner, an HP banner on her, I guess, for survivability. But for stage 20, you don't need that much HP, I think. I think you could get away with a little less. HP and a little more defense. So on and off for four years as well. Year and a half actual play. Gotcha. Well, as long as you know to take breaks. And you seem seem like the type of man who knows when to take breaks, so you can get anything we well we would want some accuracy, right?
a little less speed, but a little more accuracy. This one we drop our HP by a lot, but we also get the chance to counterattack. This one we get to keep a little extra HP. Now that I'm thinking about it, I, I think I have her somewhat built extra or a little. I put a little more on her because I do use her in, in one of the. I used her past tense in one of the secret rooms for for hard Doom Tower. That's why I built her with some uh, extra HP. But this defense is is not going to pass, so we're going to actually put this on. We'll keep this ring on and crit damage HP. Yeah. When I first started, I would put Lego books in a rare champs. Oh my god, dude, why would you do that? What? You didn't know what you were doing. That's okay. No, no, that's okay. Maybe I should make a video about that. Don't feed. Don't feed uh <laughs> Don't feed your rare champions Lego books. Oh my gosh, dude. That's like if um somebody Where's the where's where's the thing? Hold on. Hold on, let me let me That's like the equivalent of where is it? It's like the equivalent of somebody who fed their legendary champions to, to Warboy. This is definitely going to make Warboy seen this. the best of the best, the number one champion. This is one of my older videos when I was still learning how to edit. And all of Raid Shadow Legends and all of... You know what I've always... Where is it? Basically right here. There you go. And this, as you can see, will bring Warboy up to level 60 that is 2,103,370 xp this is definitely going to make warboy the number one champion in all of raid shadow legends and all of teleria we're going to try him out in arena we're hey gonna ryan what's up hydra. Dude? we'll throw him in the clan boss we'll see what's up I'll throw him into hydra did you see this warboy i i like photoshop or i edited it so that it looked like warboy did 12 million damage to hydra nightmare but what's up ryan thanks for stopping by dude as always, we'll throw him in the clan boss. And then I also edited this part to make it look like, so you can see the, it's kind of crappy. But War Boy doing a one key. <laughs> boss, we'll see what's up. But yeah, I fed, I fed a legendary champion. And there you Warboy. go. Man. <laughs> pretty fun times. Yeah, pretty sure I fed some good champions that thought weren't good. Yeah, we all do it. We're we're all susceptible to it. We all make that mistake. Fall for that. Yeah. What Warboy did a one key on Hydra and Clan Boss. <laughs> all right, so I think Ethel is built decently. Fifty k HP, three k attack. It bothers me that she's not at two hundred speed, but you know. And it bothers me that she's 8 over crit. But I'm not going to trip too much about it. We'll just leave it as is. And a little more accuracy, which you don't you don't need too much accuracy for stage 20 normal of dragon. So 200 is okay. I don't know for Doom Tower if it's going to fly. But the, oh, who else is next? El Hain. So we have to build El Hizen. And let's put a blessing on her. Probably Phantom Touch, right? Account takeover? No. I don't usually do account takeovers. Just That's just not the, the kind of content I, I really want to do. I am about to do my next video for um, YouTube. And um, I'm doing a Dragon 20 video. So I want to show people how to make dragon teams but i i realized that not everybody has all of the champions that i have and i want to somewhat appeal to newer players some some people who might be new to raid looking 
for tips on how to defeat the dragon, for an example, because one of the first stages, one of the first stages you want to do as a newer player is dragon. And so I'm using champion, or I'm trying to build a team using champions that I feel a lot of newer players might have in the beginning. And now that I'm thinking about it again, I don't think a lot of people are going to have cold hearts from the beginning. So I should probably take these cold hearts out. And then the other argument is they're not going to have the kind of gear that I have as an end game player. But I'm going to do my best. Even if I wanted to build a champion with like lower stats, I don't have the gear to build champions with low stats. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard. Okay, Elhane, no masteries, that's okay. We don't need to, uh, what was I doing? Oh, what? Let's just do um the, um, what do you call it? Oh, one second. There you go. Let's use the Hell Hades Optimizer. All right, Elhane. I would have to go out of my way to far spend the energy to farm bad gear, which I, I really don't want to do. I'll just put a disclaimer or something. You see, looking forward to that vid. Are you? Are you? You're not a new, newer player, are you? You're probably, you're probably already farming. You probably are already farming, a Dragon Twenty. No. Bye, Ryan. Thank you. Have a good day, you too. I'm trying to think of stats that people might actually have. As a, as a newer player. I don't touch dragon at all now. Yeah. I bet. I don't touch dragon either. I only really farm spider and fire night now. Now the game's saying, you have too many options. You're struggling with Fire Knight hard? Farming if hard? Do you have two ally attack champions? I just came out with a video talking about it, but I'm assuming you don't have ally attack champions then. Because you could build something like this. And you don't even need to have a reset champion. You don't need to have ally attacks. It's nice if you have them, but if you don't, you could definitely do, go um, to stage two without them. As long as you have the, the right um, speeds and um, turn meter decrease, decrease speed, etc. Before your break. Yeah. It's uh you really have to sit there and, and, and work on it. It's kind of a struggle. Alright, let me um I have to use the bathroom real quick. Let me just leave you guys with this real quick. Hey guys, it's over and we're just beginning. Guys, as always, if you like this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit the like button too, it helps a lot to grow the channel. And we're trying to get to the 2,000 mark subscribers so we can have like giveaways for the community and stuff. And guys, for today's video, we have something really exciting here because Doc just 
summon the new permanent fusion that is a mythical champion. I have a video talking about her, Lady EK. She's really powerful everywhere in this game. And guys, I wish Doc could have waited to summon her so I could have recorded, but he was really excited and he summoned her. But we built her just now and I built her for the most difficult dungeon in this entire game and she is really powerful everywhere in this game in the clan boss and stuff arena but i think the fire knight is the place she shines the most anyway she is the best ally attack in this game she boosts the attack and the crit damage of the allies joining the attack and she is the best stripper in this game in my opinion too because she puts increased accuracy and then she strips the enemy team without hitting that is really important for not having weak hits once she's not void right but guys let's have a look at the finite comp doc is using i have a video talking about his previous team that was based on coriel i have coriel here but with cardio the timing was variable a lot right we have like 56 seconds run that was the best time with lady mccabe is really faster and we have like one minute and 10 seconds it was just like this and with her it's always I fast out. always fast i freaked out just now because i i um i was walking back from the bathroom over here and i saw that my my computer and I thought I left, I thought I played the video and then I thought I left the screen on my champions page. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm showing you guys a video, but it's, on, it's still on raid. No. Massive. Good but let's have a look. I know it's a neutral end game team. Doc Maroy is a neutral end game player, mm -hmm. but Lady Kate is really powerful. Yeah, I got, I got to remember that. So I, I did the, the hard fire night video and I was kind of worried that some people would say like, oh, um, you know, I don't have those those champions, but or I don't have that those champions or that gear. But I I realized doing the hard stages is an advanced dungeon. It's uh, it's not meant to be for newer mid game players anyway. But yeah, little side note there. If you can do at least hard one, that's a lot better. Using in every single comp you can have for the finite. Let's just have a look here. Long beard as leader, so we can have his aura. Wait, do I have is... Genzin? Because okay, so the reason I ask is because Genzin's animations are quick, meaning that when they do, or when we, uh, I do not have Gen Genzin. Meaning when we're using the animations to attack the fire knight to drop the shield, it's just it's quick. It's go boop. As opposed to my other t my my current team, which the animations take quite some time because my some of my champions have to like run up and then come back. Where Genzin is just like that. Uh... Twenty three percent crit rate in dungeons, and we have like seventy seven percent crit rate, so it's okay. Here we have the finite stats, so we can have like you have 281 him. speed and as much. Then if you if you build a hard fire knight team MC, then I would I would definitely incorporate Genzin because he's fast. Damage as we can, right? We don't need accuracy with him. Savage is always good, and masteries we have him oh, in he's got war master because he's built for damage. Everything in fire knight is about damage, right? And Genzin here, let's have a look. Can you do Ice Golem run to see the team? Can you do Ice Golem run to see the... You want to you wanna see me, my Ice Golem team? Is that what you mean? Or did you want me to play a video for Ice Golem? I have a video breaking down an, an Ice Golem team if, if you want that. I do it in 28 seconds. Right here. There's uh, that link if you wanna if you wanna check that out. I'll do the run for you real quick so you can see it. But follow that that video because it it'll obviously break it down and I have to, you know, 
All right, I'll do it real quick for you. This is the team right here. Always out of coffee. And then here, whenever you can, I would just target the uh, ice gold. Oh, hey, my new time. 25 seconds. This should have been the, the headline for my video. You're in so many raid channels, to be honest. It's it's a good thing to be in so many. Keep, keep your uh, finger on the pulse. But yeah, that's the team, Rudinoid. Can see is our wave killer. I kind of He's in randoms. Okay, we have Longbeard. We don't use his L attack in the waves, right? And we wave. We prioritize her A two, and we don't use. That's pretty fast. Three sixty five. Two thirty three for Genzin. Two forty Prince Kaimar. Not too fast, but it's probably speed tune two seventy for nut. That's I think that's um, just the, I think mine's like a two sixty. Yeah, no worries, dude. You're welcome. Easy. You should have noticed there's in the wave, and then we reset. It's increased attack and increased creep damage. Man, this is big. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we finish it with Nud. Look at wow. this, our record, 49 seconds, 49 wow. seconds. We broke our own record here, 49 seconds. And let's just have another run. Look at this. It's always like this, guys, always like this. Okay, could it be 70 seconds? 18 seconds, it will be 50 seconds, I think, the run. It was not that fast, the second wave. Yeah, see, Genzin just pops in and pops right well, out. She is really amazing. She nah, I really want Genzin. Really, really amazing. And she is an ally attack champion that has an AoE attack. It's like Lunatari, but even better than Lunatari, right? Yeah, 50 seconds. <laughs> Guys, it's really, really That's fast amazing. and really consistent. Really, really fast and really consistent. As you could see, we broke. But he's got a, a plus four. Plus four, plus four, plus two. That's still pretty cool, though. That's entertaining to see. Oh, wait, that's my wife. Okay, we were building... El Hain. Where is there we go. Okay. Yeah, oh, that was a freaking crazy speed, dude. I was like, what? What? Yeah, he's definitely a Kraken. All those plus four with those stats. I mean his Mikage was going at 365. Like, what's the fastest champion I have? I think it might be Cardio. No, wait, is it Arbiter? 345. My Arbiter used to be at 360 something, I think. And I think that was the fastest, 363. But I broke her so I could build Cardio for Hard Fire Knight. So I could farm Hard Fire Knight. I need to farm more. Yeah, but those that was insane. Forty nine seconds for hard ten fire knight. I I like my my hard fire knight. I'm only doing stage six. I was unable to get to ten. I was in. I was unable to do ten. My best is two minutes for stage six for fire knight hard. Insane. Oh, that's right. We're doing oh hey. Oh, 
All right. So this is this seems like a realistic new new uh, new player type um, setup. I got the quad. I hate putting this gear, this kind of gear on. Um... Where did it go? Where did it go? Damn. But then again, I'm not even using the gear, so. And then who else could we put in for rares only? Why am I building her? Because I'm about to do a video um, for Dragon 20. I'm going to show multiple teams that people could use for doing uh, stage 20 of Fire Knight. I mean of um, uh, Dragon. And then Hard Doom Tower, the secret rooms for Hard Doom Tower is another thing. But mainly for for content. That's pretty much it. But now that I'm looking at a at everybody, I might not even need to build Elhane. Cause I would so I would I would slot in Athel. I think Apothecary is something to consider. A Veer, the Elf Mage. Poison on the A1, decrease attack and decrease speed. Turn meter control. Frozen Banshee is something I know a lot of people will have. And Soulbound Boyer. Put her in a stun set. And I'm trying not to use voids because a lot of newer players are probably not going to have uh, the void champions. Too many voids. So, want more War Maiden in for sure because she brings the AoE. And then probably another AoE. Yeah, so it would be. It would be Elhane then. So this would be the team. Yes, War Maiden for waves. And that's pretty much it. So we were looking at Athel in the lead. Athel? Athel. 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 And then, who are the other two? War Maiden. So what did I sell my account for 70 euro? I don't understand. So what I did, I sell... Oh, you're saying what you did. Uh, you sold your account for 70 euros? Was it an endgame account? Can I see War Maiden? Oh, maybe she's in the reserve. I should, I need to pull her out. Oh, Frozen Banshee. We build her too. Yeah, Frozen Banshee was was also in the team. There we are. Okay, so that's going to be the. So. When we're speed tuning this, we're going to want to have Apothecary is going to naturally be the fastest. So we'll have him go first. It was level 100, not very strong champions, all dungeons not very strong. For 70 euros, that's pretty good. For, for 70 euros, a level 100 account 
you're doing all the dungeons, even if you don't have strong champions for 70 euros, that's pretty good. Alright, so we would have the speed boost going first. And there's not going to be any need for this. So, well, I'll just leave it. And then that's when we want our our two champions to do their AoEs. And here we're not going for time, so we can, we can prioritize and do this. And then we're not going to bother with using these for the waves. But we do want to start out with Crumbling Blast. So it's going to be Apothecary going first, then War Maiden. Then we're going to have Elhane and Aethel. Because of Battle. Yeah, Battle can solo. Can solo pretty well. And hopefully by then the waves will be dead and Frozen Banshee won't even need to take a turn. And then it'll be pretty much rinse and repeat. Leave that. And then... This. That, oh, I see. How fast was your... Was your um, ice golem team for stage twenty? Three turn cooldown. Then for here, I guess we can just war maiden would fall off. We don't really care about war maiden, but frozen banshee. We'd want to probably do this. War maiden could actually probably open with this extra poison leave it as is leave that as is too so not too much of a requirement we just got to speed zoom them so i'd have to build my team around apothecary going first and then war mating going second so let's see where uh elhain landed in terms of her Speed. Actually, I should probably do. Okay, where's Elhane at? Aethel's going at what speed? One poison champ. I'm not going to be relying on too many poison, poison um champions for for doing this. I will have Frozen Banshee going first, or not first. Sorry, uh, fast enough to where where I think she's going to be putting out enough poisons on her on her A1. I should probably close this out. That way she just does this. Because she does she places two. So it's pretty decent. And then Aethel and Elhane will probably doing be doing the, the bulk of the damage. And then I could probably also show that if you have cold hearts, that'd be better. I'll do that for the for the second team I show for that video. That's that. So I, I uh, what, what is um, Aethel's speed is going at one ninety seven. So I'd want Elhain to be around around there. So the turn order would be Apothecary, Speed Boost, Decrease Defense. So both Apothecary and War Maiden need to be going faster than one ninety seven. So trying to Apothecary won't be too hard, but War Maiden. I might struggle with trying to get the speeds up. So minimum 198. And Aethel could probably be around 197 just as well. So let's redo these stats here. And then we'll see uh, how it goes. Apothecary, and then Apothecary, we only care about just straight speed with Apothecary. So Apothecary should actually be pretty easy to, to build. A pot. I do have them in Frenzy for some interesting reason. Miracle Heal.
This could be a fun, fun one to use. Let's go with Survival Instinct. Turn meter increased by 5% every time of debuff. And when you're going up against the dragon, you are getting debuffed. And then extra 1500 HP. Choose it. There are masteries here. Um, I don't know if these are the masteries I would I would tell newer players to use. So let's let's change it up. Let's change this up. So if I was a newer player and I was telling them to build, well maybe I would go here. Res? No, res is more for. I'd probably go down here. AOE. Your support champion would want things like this. You want him to survive. I naturally just take this path for, for counterattack stuff, but I wasn't supposed to take this. Definitely want to take this. Increase the value of the heals. Increases the amount of healing and the value of shield buffs placed by the ship if the target has 40% or less. Yeah. Okay. I do want lasting gifts. We should probably put um, Bulwark. Make Apothecary a little bit tanky. Take ball work. And we could also decrease the damage center. This is this champion. Is it? Okay. A pot doesn't need accuracy. Wait a minute. A pot can crit. Yeah, well, I'm not going to spend gems to, to reset it again. So let's go um, do this. Take uh, this or this one. Increase the healing. Yeah. Take this and then we'll take that. And then the last one will probably go here. Cycle of Revenge, 50% turn meter when an ally has attacked with a crit hit. No, we should take this. Cycle of Revenge for sure. And then this, these last ones are kind of just up in the air. Ally res. No, oh, useless. Not really useful there, not useful there. So we'll take Lore of Steel. You know, we'll take Lore of Steel. And seems as if we'll do this one. Decreases if it has a stun sleep petrification. And we'll just take rejuvenation. Okay, so Apot has his masteries. We're gonna build him. Rebuild him here. Let's see what the optimizer pulled up for nothing. Okay. It's probably because El Hain's only at five stars. So let's just see what kind of speed I can get for El Hain. I know she was good at 170. But we'll see what, what the, we get now. They changed the Frenzy set. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. I could just do all speed. I don't even think I need... Um... Actually, no. I, I want crit also. So. All right. Let's see. 3, 3, 2, 5, 168. 
it's a, it's a more of a, a realistic thing so Okay. It's stone skin. Well, it's more about stats at this at this point, so let's just do it. And if anything, she can hold on to this gear. I'll take it off later. Let me take this one. Protection. Well, we're in stone skin section, so let's stay here for a minute. I'm going to do a crit rate. And regenerative. Re oh, let's do protection. Did you met someone who knows you from YouTube in real life? No, I haven't met. I haven't been doing YouTube long enough to have that kind of following. And on top of that, I don't think I'd want to meet anybody in person. Or I don't know. Maybe. I haven't really thought about it. Uh, why do you ask? No. To answer your question directly, no, I haven't. Protection. Then regen. It's mute. What is what is mute? There we go. Take this one, and then probably be able to attain that speed that I was looking for if I ranked her up. But I don't know about ranking up Elhane using the chickens for it. I mean, I have the chickens to spare. So maybe, I don't know. We'll keep it like this and see if we're successful. 168, a little under crit, but that's because we need to upgrade this. Just do it, just do it. Accuracy, nice, okay. 168, 105. Okay, now let's hit the refresh. Oops. As soon as this goes away, we'll hit the refresh. We'll go home, hit the refresh. And then we can start building. Apothecary. Maybe you have a problem. Are, are you able to hear me? Can you, can everybody hear me? Because the, vo the volume, it shows that uh, you guys can hear my voice. On my end. Only two things we're looking for with Apothecary. Making sure that Apothecary is going fast. And critting. Because his heals can crit. So. Yeah. Pretty much it. And we could also add some extra HP and defense. Okay, so you get yeah, Rudenoid, you might want to check your your thing. No, I don't. I think his heals also ba are based off of crit damage. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, we should put a cap on how much HP because people might look at that might look at that and say, "Oh, hey, that's a lot of HP. I can't get that." Gotcha. There you go. This is more real, more like it. 
five K defense though. So uh let's let's max that out at a four K. We don't want to go too high. Over crit, okay. Stop that at 105 for crit. There's accuracy, defense. But that's a lot of speed also. So we'll say 220 max. It's tr it's kind of hard limiting yourself, adding these restrictions for when you're building something. And now it wants me to hit at 240 crit damage. Okay. That just made it worse. If it, let's just do it. Okay. Not those boots. They really want me to use those boots. Okay. All of these want me to use those boots. Okay. Just great. Apothecary is gonna be. I'm trying not to build build apothecary too strong. Because these newer players are going to look at these stats and be like, well, dude, do you have end game gear? And I'm like, yeah, I tried. I tried. Do you have some account where I only run rares or uncommon? You're the second per king. You're onto something, dude. No, I don't. I only have um, this account and I have another alt account that I don't play on too much. But this is my main account and the only account that I'm actively working on currently. All right, well, let's. Damn. Okay, I'd rather take this. Something like this. Okay, we'll we'll go with the one that has a little less HP. It's a little more realistic. Okay, this. What well, high attack stats? <laughs> oh my god. Forget it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. We're, we're, we're doing it. Where'd it go? All right. Let's do this. Okay. We're looking for split parry. The shield. That's fine. I don't have to rank those up. Okay. 
and then attack. It has the HP and then speed. HP speed, okay. So two, 100, and uh, yeah. All right, this seems more viable for somebody. It's a swift parry set, I know. But still, a little more realistic. I don't have any five-star gear. Okay, so we built Elhane, Elhane, I keep mixing their names up. Elhane, Aethel, Apothecary. War Maiden needs to be next in the rotation. So, Apothecary first, Aethel second. No, 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 War Maiden needs to go second. So, War Maiden needs to be somewhere between 198 and 202. So, let's see. I don't think she needs anything else really other than accuracy. She just needs to be speed tuned right and then because her skills don't does it it's a hundred percent chance. Yeah, that's about it. Block debuffs, phantom touch maybe. Damage reduction per hit. Decreases damage received. Uh, let's just do phantom touch. It will only worry about those two things then. Oops. Okay, 198 and 400 accuracy. Don't need that much accuracy. Let's do 250. And I need. Okay. All right. Uh. Oops. Yeah, this is fine. Want at least 200, because the dragon, I think, has... Uh, well, I should actually look that up, too. You know what? We'll just leave it at that. It's, it's better to have more accuracy. We'll go with this one. Yeah. This one? No, we'll go with this one. Okay. Perception. Because perception gear. Oh, damn it, I always do that. No, not that one, this one. All right, perception gear. So this one needs to have the flat HP stat. It is right here. 12. Shield, it's at a 12. 35 accuracy. The one that has 35 accuracy. This one. Let's get these boots real quick for perception before we move on. Triple speed. 
people accuracy. This one, okay. And then we might as well throw on something for the ring. Okay, War Maiden is built, going at 198, perfect. And the last one is ooh, Frozen Banshee. Now with Frozen Banshee, all we care about is that she is fast and accurate with some survivability. So we'll give her 40k HP. Minimums here, and then she needs to be going at... She needs to be going last in the rotation, so... Author carry goes first, decrease defense, AoE, AoE. Well, Elhane is going very slow, but it shouldn't matter too much. Okay, so we'll just build, build her fast and accurate as we get it. Fast, accurate. Yeah, they're going to see those stats and get it. What the hell? Okay, a little more realistic. Uh, let's pick one of these 300 ones. Let's see here. 390 accuracy. Let's just pick this one. Okay. I didn't hit refresh, so the thing is bugging. Showing me gear that's not even available. All right, we have the cruel, and then we're gonna go to stun. The stun helmet. Stone skin, shield, triple crit on the mythic. This is a divine life buff. Protection boots. The upgraded all the way. And now we can add the accessories.
this one, right? Flat, flat, there you go. Okay. Now Frozen Banshee is built out. Alright, so everybody's built. Yep, okay. Now let's see the team in action. Okay, that took a hot minute. Oh my god, watch it fail. Is it me or my nuker is not nuking? Or is just Ar or not Arbiter? Or is uh El Hain and Aethel just not that strong? Wow, okay. So I think War Maiden probably needs more HP and survivability stats, if this is the case. Good drops and rolls. Put the whole team in, in two turns stone skin. Yeah. Then you can at least do it in eight turns and get the the top key. Or not the, at least the, the, the lowest uh, chest, I mean. So yeah, technically it would be a one key. Eight turns, whole Hydro team in stone skin. It'd be fun to entertain at least. It'd be good entertainment. I don't have the I don't have too much stone skin gear though. So I'd have to I'd have to look into it. The top nukes for uncommons and Oh, are you wait, are you talking about are you talking about the whole uncommon common common um thing? And are you talking about for normal hydra? In general, yeah, so the team I actually use to because I can get for normal, I can get the one key in like one or two turns using using this team here. Trenda does amazing damage, maybe hard, yeah, hard. This is my key for hard, hard. Uh, you could easily get the the minimum chest is only 5.1 mil. I haven't looked at it, but I'm pretty sure. With like the right setup, so buffs, debuffs, and then Taurus just using his God Hand ability. Yeah, that's a one key right there, I'm pretty sure. Maybe. I don't know. But definitely within eight turns, I think they could they could pump out and get five point one minimum. But yeah. You can only one key normal sometimes. Oh, I see. Okay, then we're 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 at uh we're thinking about two different things then yeah for if you're in like the mid game a mid game uh account mid game entering late game then yeah i can, I can see how it you might be still here on normal and hard uh but yeah i think that that theory works checks out 
But then if you go up against the head that steals buffs, there's a chance that he might steal stone skin. So you'd have to like redo the the rotation. Redo the run, I mean. A war maiden, let's see. I just upgrade this gear. I'm out of silver. I'm out of silver. All right, let's see. Okay, Chromium Blast, AoE. Oh my God, horrible team. Yep, it, it happens. Why are you doing this to me? Maybe I should bring in another support champion instead of having Elaine. This is going to fail. Oh my god. Can I pop the carry solo the dragon? It's going to take a long time. Oh, my God. Apothecary the Unkillable. Oh, no, it didn't do it. Okay. Well, okay, so let's, let's take out... Let's take out El Hain and put in another rare support champion. Avir the Elk Mage. That'd be a good one. A good one, yeah. Let's bring it over here. For a resetter ally protect. So I'm trying to build this team and make it accessible to people who aren't going to have those kinds of champions. And I don't think newer players are going to have reset champions. So I'm going to try and not to do that particularly. However, and I'm trying to stick stick to only rares. 
Let's try Avir. Because Avir is a is another support champion. The goal is not to make this a speed team. It's to make a team that people will be able to build and farm stage 20, even if it takes them two or three minutes. And I'll I'll address that when I when I um make the video for it. Poison on the A1. AoE decrease attack and speed. So we want some accuracy. A little bit of heals. So we want them fast, accurate. Fast and accurate. Okay. Where is the... Revere. Oh, wait, shit. See if this pops up anything. Nope, not anything. Okay. Maybe it just like. It's kind of glitchy, it needs to reset. Let me reset the thing. All right, screw it. We're not going to use the optimizer. It's taking forever. What we will do is kick it old school. We're looking for accuracy. And I have no accuracy banners. Yeah, I'm not touching that. HP or defense. Speed substats. Let's do... Let's do this. Oh wait, that last one need a ring. Not the best gear, but I think the point is to not use the best gear. Okay. So when we're building a Veer, we want him to be fast and accurate. So let's get some speed boots on him. It's been a while since I've had to do this manually. Let's take this one because it's already maxed out. And we want a HP percent or defense thing, but we want him to have speed and accuracy still. go and then the same thing with his glove speed accuracy substats and we could probably take this try not to use a mythical piece and Yeah, immortal. Let's make sure he's an epic one. Two oh six speed. Show this one, this one. A little less accuracy. Because his main function is gonna be speed boosting. He does have a poison on the A1. 
and we want to have him. No, we'll keep him like this because we need that accuracy. All right, so this is our guy. All right, let's try him now and see if this this team will work. Maybe I should get switch out because he ha she has the HP aura, but what if we had the defense aura or the accuracy aura? We'll we'll see. Okay, we got the decrease attack, which will help to survive, actually, now that I think about it. It's going to help us out. Oof. Oh, boy. Heal, Apothecary. Heal. There you go. Oh, and make my apothecary faster and just tell people to build their apothecary faster. Oh boy. That war maiden looking iffy. But putting a Viru actually seems like it's helping. Doing better than before, so. Tyrell, Tyrell used to be an OG. Now he's fallen off so hard, nobody even talks about him anymore. For newer players, you think so? I guess if you just put like, if, you, if I could tell them just to put like all sta uh, speed, sub, um, just do a triple speed set. That does seem kind of attainable. No, but if this works, this works. Yeah, this will work. Okay, this is fine. This should be fun. And the ally protect that I have, the bulwarks um, mastery that I have on Apothecary is doing pretty well as well. Doing a bunch of poisons, poison sensitivity, decrease attack, the small version, and then decrease defense. It'd be nice if a, if a War Maiden died now, but uh, I could rebuild a Veer to have bulwark as well. That would be like a double mini ally protect. Let me check a Veer's masteries better support style. There you go, three minutes. Just, that's just about what a, a newer player is looking at doing in the early game. New game. Or what do you got? New, new game. Uh, freaking, let's look at a beer real quick. And then we can ship this team out. He's got no masteries. All right, that's fine. Well, I'm not going to put Masters on him. All right, so this team works. Let's do it one more time just to check because I don't want to be recording and then it freaking fails on me. It's happened a few times, and I'd have to like stop the recording and, and redo the entire thing again after I've gone into explaining the team. Do a check. Do a check. Oh, boy. Apothecary. Apothecary! That was so close. Yeah, it's a decent team. So I was talking in my Discord to some of the people about me doing tournament style things now, uh, tournament style videos, where basically I would say something along the lines of, hey guys, I'm holding a tournament to see, you know, to kind of bring the community together. It's a little bit of a challenge. I want to see who can do stage 20 with rares only and whoever has like the best the, whatever two people whichever two people have the best times using rares only 
will get like I don't know a twenty five dollar Amazon gift card. And if I just did challenges like that, that would be pretty cool, pretty engaging. But I haven't thought it all the way through. I still have so many other video ideas I want to get through. Uh oh, War Maiden. Okay. Oof. Avir with the heels. Best blessing for Apoth. Survival instinct, I think. Vi I forgot how to spell. All right, here we want War Maiden to die. And... Because the ideal situation for this would be pretty much Frozen Banshee soloing it. It would make it a lot faster, less turns taken. But it walks too much of a fine line for me to care. Because I'd have to build War, War Maiden with the right amount of... Like, I'd have to rebuild the whole team. But this is good. This is good. This is fine. So this will be the first team I showcase for doing Dragon 20 for newer players. And then um, I guess I could talk about uh, more of a mid-game entering late-game account teams. And then I would show like an end-game team for Dragon 20. Solid. Three minutes. Basic. Perfect. Okay. I do want to add a little extra survivability to Apothecary before I completely ship it. Because I... Wait, I don't have any silver. Let's sell these. Yeesh. Oh well, next time. Now I think the, the next team that I'm going to show for the video would be this team. A little more mid-game. Uh, this is for a team. This team is for people who are who have been playing for a little bit, maybe you're like level 60, level 70, and you have these champions. They should have put in a practice arena. Oh, that would have been awesome for us to like work with each other in that sense, like actual live one-on-one. -on -one. That would be perfect. All right, this is the team I have for mid to late game accounts. A lot better, a lot faster. Oh, it looks like they're going to hit. And I don't know if the Cold Hearts will survive. Yeah, that was... Because those, those Hordens actually hit pretty hard. Oof. Will Tyrell sweep? That last Cold Heart. My, my, the, one, the Cold Heart on the left. Oh boy, okay. So that is not ideal. Oh, if I had that last cold heart, let me switch out cold hearts. Let me look at my cold hearts real quick. Yeah, that would have been done already if that cold heart survived. Now my cold hearts, I can't change around too much. This one died, the three star blessing one. So let's look at that. Let's put in the third. This one has a little more survivability.
yeah it would have been also cool to have like um arena actually no that's pretty much it what you just said i was like i'm i was gonna say what you said but differently and then i realized i'm just gonna say i'm basically saying what he said already closing out opening and then we're gonna prioritize that okay so this one should be a little more consistent. Debuffs, AOEs. Oh my god. Hmm. Mm. Cause now the, the the cold heart on the my second cold heart ended up dying. It was the second one. They target they target the the Pokemon or the enemies will target the the champions with the lowest HP are the ones they think they can sh one shot, and this one has this one has less defense and less uh, attack or HP. I mean, let's try it again. I change that preset. Let's see. I just need all of them to get there to um, can maybe change that cold hearts preset. Okay, that's better. I I think my my uh my preset for Ugo was off. Okay, that's better. So let me still change the it was the one on the left. The slower one. So the slower cold heart, I need to change the preset so that she just does her does that. Okay, now let's see it. Okay. Yeah. So this one's ready to, to showcase. All right. And then I have to build a team that... This is my hard dragon team. Uh... Dragon. Showcase one. Oh. We need more uh, preset tabs because uh, I'm out. Okay, I have to use the bathroom real quick. Let me just uh, put this in the background. 
Be right back in a minute. Nice. We got a. Uh, we have a savage piece that is trash. Oh, we got our new time also. 52 turns, 1 minute and 59 seconds. That's interesting. Just got lucky. Cool. All right, so for the team that. For the team that I want to build for more of a late game account, we can start using legendary champions. How is this team doing? This is my team for hard. Turn off the data, but no, leave it. So it had the crit rate and it had the crit damage, which is good, but it's only five star. Now, me, I'm a little nitpicky. I don't keep five star gear, even if it's and it had flats also. So me, I don't keep I don't keep um, five star or below. The only gear I keep are six star epics and above. And they they have to have at least um, three desirable stats. It's two. If it if it has two flats, I usually almost always sell it. But for savage gear, you're looking for crit rate, crit damage, attack speed. Percent attack percent. Sorry. Yeah. Like it would have been nice if it was. If I was a late to like mid mid game late player, but Venomage. Actually, I've seen Venomage, but I've never actually built Venomage. Oops. This champion I really want. This one looks cool. Kind of like a Hawaiian, see the the Hawaiian island vibes here. Activating two poisons on the A1. Decrease defense and attack. 100% on one enemy. Great for clan boss. 
AoE heal reduction and two poisons. Yeah, very, very, very nice. Enemies under heal reduction inflict less, 15% less, and then 45 increase. Yeah, Venomage, I never looked at her until now. I've seen Venomage, but looks like a pretty good clan boss type champion. Dungeon type champion, even. Dun boss dungeon. Yeah. I think what I'd have to do is record and then reassemble. Yeah, because I have no space for. Doing that. Okay, so then that would be. I, I I've always wanted to use Lissandra in Dragon. I don't know why. Because their thing is you just make her fast. That good. Priest Orn. I've seen people talk about him. But I've never used him. He's a Sylvan Watcher, I think, right? Yeah. Or here we go. Poison A1. A2. Instantly activating one poison. How they look. Yeah, that's a good one. Poison sensitivity AoE with more poisons. Two poisons. Heals this champion by 1% of their max HP, of his own max HP. Each poison debuff. So he's got some heals on that too. Increase this champion's HP and defense up to 25%. Resets each round. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Especially for dragon. For the dungeons and for the clan boss, that's pretty good. The heals and the poisons with the sensitivity. Instant activation of poisons. Like some, some serious comps right there. Yeah, he, he's lit, yeah. He's litty. That's what the kids are saying today. Liddy. But then for a more of an end game account or a late game, we'd be looking at something that incorporates uh that incorporates uh what do you call it? Uh reset and seer. So let's uh Let's do that. I don't want to use Arbor. Regen and Immortal for, for Orn. If, whenever I get it, if or when I get around to building him, I'll definitely do that. Okay, where is Lissandra? So we would want Lissandra. Speed boost, and then we would want somebody to like that. Yeah, no, Ghostborn is actually perfect. His his A three, I think, is irresistible. Plus, he brings about a buff, so there's that. Because Seer can just will be able to rip. Bring in Nut. Where's Kaimar? Boost, decrease, open, close out the A3, A2, rip, reset, save the A3, go in. With that, but who, yeah, so that's that's one way I could do it to show get to the boss in under 20 seconds, maybe something like that. Now, is this two? 
Is this late? Would you consider this a late game team? Is that because I know Harvest Jack? Every time you attack him, your buffs, the buffs that you have, decrease until you basically have nothing for each hit. And then, doesn't he also place fear? So he could technically just keep fearing you and you can't do anything. But how would that how would that build look? I guess I could get rid of this team. This Frost Spider team is, is way outdated. But you see, yeah, I fought I fought somebody who, who had a harvest jack and it was just me versus him and all my buffs kept going away. It was so annoying. So we need someone to place, pl uh, not price, place, we need decreased defense. Oh, sorry, not to decrease defense. Uh, let's see, we have this. It's one buff. This will be, because Ghostborn does, so that's another buff, that's two buffs. We'll just see how it, how it is with that. Nut and Kaimar. And then Seer. Oh, well, I think we can get away without using Seer. Should we even use Kaimar? Because I feel like Kaimar is... Because this team is supposed to be... Uh... Let's see. So the first team... Would be like for newer players. The second team would be more for mid game, mid game going into late game. And then this would be sort of, and no, because this would be technically like an end game farm team. So we could incorporate this and see how it goes. Okay, so uh, Lissandra's going first, right? Yeah, so she goes, she places her. Energize. Then Ghost Barn is going to go next. 262, right? Uh, Kaimar goes, but we're going to open with that. We're going to close this out. Then Ghost Barn goes. Then Nut will go. And then we're going to have Seer do that. Rinse and repeat. Except here we open with Seal of Magic, and we close out after. But when the second time comes around, then it actually might be off, because Lissandra takes the first turn. Yeah, no, so this the entire thing would be off. Well, let's run it and see. Who's bringing the decreased de defense, though? Oh, shit. Why am I, why am I saying who's bringing the decreased defense? I've been talking about Ghost Bowl this whole time. I literally have the memory of a goldfish, guys. Let's see it. Negative affinity. Oh, I guess she hits hard enough to not care. 
Oof. Okay, so nut probably isn't the best because of negative affinity. I got three champions with negative affinity here. Okay, so obviously not my best because at some point I was able to do it in sub 30 seconds. I don't remember the team that I had though. But Nut is not going to be the one today. Who's my new career? Ninja? HP burns? Let's see. Okay, maybe we change Ghostborn out. Because Ghostborn um, is negative affinity on this, on stage 20. Let's try that. Let's take out. Let's put a different. Uh... I I did want him to stay because his animations are quick, but it's too inconsistent for me to to say yeah. Use this team. I mean, there's um Draco. His his um animations aren't too too slow. And I don't know how I feel about Ninja exactly. Let's not use Ninja. You know what? I do want to do a, a video guide on Deliana. Deliana is actually pretty good. EMHP. We're looking for EMHP. I mean, I guess. I wanted to use Tuanarok for Hydra, but she didn't really do much for me. So I don't use her for Hydra. I, I she's honestly been she's just been sitting there, to be a hundred percent with you. Husk? Husk is positive affinity, right? Not enough buffs. Yeah, I think you were the one that told me to try to wanna rock out in Savage gear. I just haven't gotten around to it. Nope, this is not the team. Not a good team. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So that's not going to be it. Um, what if we move Lissandra? Because I know Royal Guard does does well for this. So we put Royal Guard in the lead for that extra 34% in the attack. And then we can put Lissandra in. Because we're going fast enough already, so. All that matters is that, right? Speed tunes off. I should have checked. It's okay. Under twenty seconds. But still not the best time. I really wanted to use Lissandra, but I don't think it's going to work out. Try Arbiter. I think my thirty, my my twenty nine thirty second team was was a, a bunch of EMHP champions. I think. Now, now that's kind of clicking back with me. Close out the A2. see these two okay, maybe we don't need it see her exactly maybe just another royal guard so round one go We'll see. We'll see how that works. One, two, 
prioritize that, prioritize that. Okay. Trial and error. Okay. So I'm going to try take, taking Draco out and putting in either Lydia or Venus. It's not speed to him properly, so the debuffs need to go before the Royal Guards go. I can't change the speed of Dracomorph. Dracomorph. Dracomorph because um, I use him for my clan boss team. So he has to stay where he's at right now. And then I need to change out uh, the other. What do you call it? You have her in Relentless. I'm going to keep this, even though it's flat, because if it rolls a quad, then I can reset it, and that would actually be... Well, it's an Avenging set, and we'll keep it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Let's have Venus go in. Venus needs to go faster than the Royal Guards. So the Royal Guards are going at 247, 250... 256 minimum, 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 and so that would work perfectly. And her animation, I think, is faster than Lydia. So no, not that. Let's see if we take out this. This Royal Guard is going a little too fast for my taste. So let's switch these Royal Guards. I'll try Cold Heart. The second Royal Guard will go in, in the lead here. And then Cold Heart. All right, check the speed zone. 250. So those are still the same. Okay, seven seconds. Oh no, not enough. 20 seconds, nope. Close up, Cold Hearts A3 for the round two.
All right, let's check. Um, let's see here. Hmm. I guess 29 seconds is like the best time. Maybe I got really lucky and that's how I got the 29 seconds. It was 46 seconds. So I saw in round three, she opened with her heart seeker. We should open that. And then save it for hopefully she comes around in time to place this. Okay, that was six turns. A1, then A2 on round three for Cold Heart. Or sorry, uh, A2, then A3. Maybe that'll change it. Or I could maybe implement a second reset champion, Yumiko. Let me see. Don't use that, and then reset here, and then close that out. So open, close. Right, and then we'll, for round one, we can close it and leave that as is. Leave that as is. All right, let's see this. But then both times. We're relying heavily on Royal Guard to do clears. We'll see. Nope. No, that wasn't any better. Okay. Yeah. 
Maybe this Royal Guard just isn't strong enough. What's this one like? To one shot everything. Five and two fifty versus four eight and two eighty. We're going at 247, 250 for that one. So this one was this one was going too slow. Or the, um, what do you call it? The other one was going too fast. Let's try him in the lead with Cold Heart. No, it just might have to be that way you see her. Oh, shit, my wife's awake. Hello. Hello, babies. Did you um want me to stop streaming? I could stop streaming if you would like me to. You've been awake? Why don't you tell me? Okay. I'm just trying to build build a build this team. And then after this team, I'll be I'll be done. But I'm trying to figure out how I how I did 29 seconds last time, and I can't for the life of me remember. Are we? Are you gonna order it? Uh, I don't necessarily want one, but. I know the strawberry cream is pretty good, hint, hint. Okay, so... Yeah. Well, that wasn't it either. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, what about Lydia? What speed is she going? She's going at 256. What about Lydia? She's at 297. Okay. We can try this. And then just see how it goes. That's right, the second rural guard. I need to turn off, or I need to um, yeah, turn off his A2. Or Lydia actually brings in two, two buffs, throw Seer back in. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, roll it later. Hmm. The slower one is that one. Okay, so what we can do is, now that I, I thought about it again, we'll throw in the rearrange. So let's bring in... Roll guard number two. Decrease defense with the buffs. And then seer. Oh, but the reset. We'd want someone to reset. Well, what is my... Because this team... Where is... Uh... Oh, but then we have a nut. But then nut also kind of weak hits sometimes, no? Let's see this team. Because this team's already built for it. I mean, it's the, it's the lowest turn, but uh, it's still not fast enough. Now, it would have been, but Nut is not... Um, nut is negative affinity. So the, the issue therein lies that I need the enemy max HP to do it, but... And Nut is worth three enemy max HP champions. Which allows for for this kind of team to work. However, the negative affinity kind of throws it off. I just wish I had a Krizia. You know what I mean? Let's see again. Maybe I just get lucky. Why aren't more people using Seer in Arena? Uh, that's true. You know, I've only seen a few people use Seer in Arena. Two, three. But it's the weak hits. The weak hits are messing me up. 
Otherwise, this would have been the dragon would have been clapped already. Twenty-seven turns. Let's see if it quads. Although Seer is pretty, is an ex excellent nuker. I think Seer can even, you know, sh strips the strips the stone skin. Is there gear for nut? No. Affinity breaker. I could put him in affinity breaker, but then that also kind of just takes away from the total value of what he is. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to change the presets, damn. I got it. We'll choose a bunch of Royal Guards and Cold Hearts. Just a full team of, of Royal Guards. An army of Royal Guards and Cold Hearts. Alright, let's fix these presets. So for the first round, I think what we can do is have Royal Guard and Cold Heart pretty much sweep the team up, right? That way Seer can save her Karma Burn for round two. Or I think what actually makes more sense, since we don't have a reset, we start off with her Karma Burn. But we're going to close this up. Yeah, we start up. We start up. It's on a. Yeah. So we can actually open with this. That way, second round comes through, and the Royal Guards are going to be. The Royal Guard and Cold Heart will be the one to sweep up. We'll say open, don't use. I feel like her A3 takes up too much time, so we're gonna close out the A3. Alright, so doing this, round one. Proper. Good. Good. Rips through. Round two. The first one to go is gonna be Arbiter again. So we'll prioritize that. And then Lydia goes. That's good. And then the Royal Guard and then Coldheart will come through. And hopefully that's enough to sweep up the second team. But Seer's going last. So maybe just open with that. And then close out that. Opening with this. And we'll see if by the time... No, because if we're coming off of a... Uh... Okay, let's just see. Wait, I thought I changed the preset. Did I not click save? No, I definitely click saved.
keep it, roll at it. If it gets a triple, might keep it. Heck, okay, so the first round is supposed to just be sealed. Oh, that's right, I didn't. And see the rips. Okay. And now let's see it. Okay, then the second round goes to Cold Heart and You know what I think it was? Now I think I'm remembering the team. Draco Morph was in, but I think what had happened was Draco took like four or five turns in a row. And you know, I just got really lucky, and that's how I got the 29 seconds. I don't think I ever had a legit farming team that was like 20 seconds. 29 seconds. I think I just got lucky one time. What's wrong, we didn't know what happened. I kinda wanna see Skull Crown in here. All right, seriously, where's Draco though? Cold Heart died, yeah. I mean, this is how it is. It's trial and error. This is how the game is played. Uh, where's Draco? There we go. I don't have her in, in, in Savage. So she's doing minuscule. I'm talking about Cold Heart. Or not Cold Heart, sorry. Uh, she's only strong enough to really clear through the waves for campaign. Although I used to have her in Savage gear. I paired her with... um. She was my, my Blender team. She was part of a Blender team. But that meta is no more. Because it used to be that, that's how it was. You would just be faster, place your, um, what do you call it? Um, place your debuffs and then ally attack and then Cold Heart and Sinesha would do, your th would do the thing.
Come on, 30-second team. I guess we would just have to the best the best possible team would be just hoping to get lucky with, with this, with the nut. Because, like, this team even did pretty well, right? Yeah, five, six seconds, seven seconds. Okay. Open with the A1 on round two. No, just about the same, so I can't settle for... In fact, this, the presets for this one need to be fixed too, to be highly more efficient. So let's see. Open here. I think that's good. What we can do is open with their moves here for round three. That way the debuff goes down first and then they all go. The game is experiencing issues. Okay. Oh, that's why I had to prioritize on round two, the heals. Okay, so cold heart, round two, open with A1. And then Ugo. Which cold heart was it? The slower one, yeah, right? Then round two, Ugo will... Um... Well, because this move's not going to be ready yet.
Yeah. There you go. Oh, that was a cold heart. Our last cold heart. She's going. She's going too slow. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's as good as it's gonna get with just epics. And uh, what do you call it? There it is. Okay. Back to what I was doing. Um, so resets. So wave clearing. But then. And I just remembered he's going too slow. Okay. Sheesh. Yeah, the Kaimar team seems most legit, most reliable. So I think I have to roll with that. So uh, the Kaimar Seer combination. Now I'm pretty sure I want to keep Royal Garden. And thank you for your input, by the way. Be my voice of reason. Definitely want to stick with um, the Kaimar and. See your team for wave clearing. And because Seer is here, we need extra buffs. Because right now there's no buffs coming from anybody. Lydia gives two extra buffs. And also plays the decrease defense and weaken. Now we need to think about putting in extra buffs, but also somebody who helps with the damage. Because that's going to be the main thing. I 
unless my seer is able to wave clear fast enough where I don't have to worry about adding another damage dealer and I can just worry about um, I mean another buffer which might be the case but let me see Trenda I'm almost hell bent on using enemy max HP. Let's try nut. But then again, I don't want to use nut. I feel like I use nut everywhere, and you should if you have him. But I'm trying not to. Which cold heart is my my best cold heart? Hold on. Five two two fifty four speed two sixty four. So not this one, not number three. Two fifty five eight two thirty two. Five two two six two fifty four. I think it's either my second, second or my first. Although they're both kind of in the same uh, realm. They both have cruel sets on. But this one has a reaction set. Reaction pieces, so we should use number one. Try out using number one. Cold heart number one, where are you at? Okay. So round one. Lydia is going to go first. And then Kaimar goes. But Kaimar is not going to be using his reset. He, we're just going to use this. Uh, oops. What? Hey, what are you doing? We're going to start off with this A1. We're going to close out uh, the A3 here. Seer is going to use the Karma Burn. But Seer also goes last here. So hopefully... Yeah, my seer is kind of slow. Too slow for this dungeon, but I think that's the best I can do for her for now. So let's prioritize these. We know we want to open and then not open again with the seal of magic so that everybody can repeat their moves. Okay, so because Coldheart and World Guard go first, it would actually make sense to have her I think with, with Seer being so slow the entire thing just kind of gets thrown off. And it's not like I can change her gear because... 
I have her speed tuned for everything else. But we're getting there. 45 seconds. So let's neglect here and just throw in um I just feel like Nut might be him. Okay. Hmm. Now the negative affinity still makes it too inconsistent. Yeah, it, it might be just them. The Cold Hearts and the Royal Guards who do it. Oops, there you go. Now let's just fine tune it, I guess. No increased attack. It's fine. It should be good enough. Six seconds. That was off. Maybe open. Change the presets there. And there too, probably, because they just wasted their enemy max HP moves on, on that. Okay, yeah, so it looks like that's the one. I just got to change the presets here. So on the second round, we should, because they these guys go first in the, in the rotation. So what if we... Not exactly that, but opened with these. Then she comes around, places this, and then goes. Same thing here. A little too fast. Let's open here. Open here. Open here so not getting wasted. And let's see. And then turn off the A3 for round two. Animation two's animation her animation is too slow. Okay, so lead Kaim or lead Royal Guard should probably save his move. Yeah, we're getting there, inching there, inch by inch. Just got to fix the presets, getting there. Lydia's A3 just needs to be turned off completely. It's not doing anything for us. Moves are so slow. 
the lead chimera on round two. Let's turn this off. That way we can go in with it set. Now let's see here. Perfect. Reset. There you go. Then they come around. Open or AoEs. AoEs. There you go. And then still opening with everything. And now we have Royal Guards to clean up. 37 seconds. And honestly, I think this might be the best it's going to get. It was just luck of the draw that I got that 29 seconds there. And I'll keep experimenting with different teams. I don't know. What do you think? You think I could do better? Consistently better? Because now I'm wondering if even having if even having Kaimar in helps that much. I wonder if I just put another nuker or another AoE nuker in, if it's more beneficial than having another Kaimar. Or instead of Kaimar, because Kaimar's re Kaimar's cooldowns for his A3 are kind of high, no? Six turns? As opposed to Yumiko, who has hers in five turns. Is it five book down to three? I think it's three turns, right? Let's try Yumiko actually. And see if we can get this even faster. Yumiko's going first. So what we're going to do is close out her reset. And uh, I think this is the faster animation, so we'll open with that. Second time around, open with this. We'll close, leave that. Prioritize this. And then see what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ram Ranch Dragon. Don't drop your soap. 18 Cowboys at Ram Ranch. 18 Cowboys in the showers. Okay, then debuffs. And then... Okay, maybe they don't have to open... If they come in, I should rerun it in check first. Okay, so there you go. So th I think they had it. Okay, so I think they had the their their EMHP moves already set when they went into round three. I'm going to rerun this and then check to see if they actually did. Because if that's the case, then I can remove the presets. Or change the presets for the next round. In fact, I probably should open up that A2 again for this Royal Guard. Okay, so pause here. So no, not this one. This one, yes. This is my second... Royal Guard. First Royal Guard. Okay, so lead Royal Guard and Cold Heart doesn't have to open on round three with the... Yeah. Okay, so let me switch that before with, the, with their A1s. So round three. Opening. Don't have to do that. You can just do that. Same thing here.
can't see now. This one didn't receive the debuff. What a jerk. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I got distracted. Um, let me see again. And then that one up there didn't receive the debuff either for the decreased defense. I'll get it later, babe. Thanks. I love you too, babe. It sucks that even though I have more than enough accuracy with Lydia, that I'm still getting resisted. Because how much accuracy does she have? 443 is more than enough for stage 20. So I don't know why I'm still getting resisted. It's, I mean, I know why. It's the 3% that Polarium has, has built in. You have a 3% chance, no matter how much accuracy you have. I could have 500 plus, I could have 600, 700, 800 plus accuracy. And even on stage 20, there's a chance to get resisted for my debuffs to get resisted. One more check. Let's see. Got it. Get it. Good. Twenty two seconds in. Weird. Okay, well, I'm going to take a break here. 
I'll keep messing around with different teams to see if I can get to a consistent like 30 second team. But um Yeah, thanks to everybody who stayed for the almost 5 hour stream session. I think this was one of the longer sh uh, uh, streaming sessions that I've ever done on on YouTube. On Twitch I've done like 12 13 hours before, but uh never on YouTube. So Thank you for everybody who stayed, Rudinoid and, and MC as, as well as King Doc, Roblox guy, that you're gone. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.